Hi, Craig. Hi, Craig. <laughs> Hi, Craig. <laughs> All right, so we are starting up this week's session. So we left last we left off, I believe everyone had, you know, for whatever reason, had gone back to the inn and had gone to sleep for the evening, correct? I believe yes. so. We just got done at the DanV, the Department of Aquatic and Motorized Vehicles. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a you have a restful evening, and you wake up the next day. What are you doing? Uh, did I go get my ID yet? Uh, no, we 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 haven't addressed that yet. I will let everybody know that I I need to go get an ID, and uh, if they want to come with, they can. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll go downstairs and have breakfast, and presumably meet up with the with the others. Just gonna, before you go, I'd ask you: Are you gonna? Do you have? Uh, do you, have you ever had an ID, or is this just you just lost, lost it? it? No, this is my first. Ah, I'm gonna make things a little more difficult. I was gonna say, if you just lost it while on the ship, you might be able to get away with getting an easier one. Um. No, I've never had one, so I don't even know what I need. Ah, uh, well, do you have anything to prove you are who you say you are? I, I don't think so. Like, what? Well, it's been a while since I've had to do it, but the, the last time I had to do it, I had to have some kind of paperwork saying I was who I said I was. Or what potentially... Kind of well, uh... How, maybe someone vouching for you might be enough. This isn't exactly a high profession town. <clears throat> okay. I'll, I'll go with just because I, I, if nothing else, I can potentially grease the wheels. <laughs> I think this place has Kilvin has some wheels. shopping to do. I'll Did go with Kilvin. I, I too <laughs> would like to go shopping. I'll follow you. All right, so um, you guys are going to have breakfast and then set out? Sounds like the plan. Yep. 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 All right. Well, when you all come piling down the stairs, uh, your uh, hi, your old friend, Marshall Guy, I forgot his name, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, waves you, waves to you and it, you know, kind of wants you to motion for you to come over. Yeah, I'll walk over. He says, uh, good morning, Miss No. How are morning. you today? Good. Good, good, good. <laughs> and then he uh, he does his little hand clap thing again, and one of his faceless minions appears with an envelope, which, hand, which they hand to you. And he proceeds to explain, well, this has, uh, this has necessary transportation papers to get you to the... Um, the capital of Astalon. If you present it at any train station along the way, they will waive any ticket fees for you and your group. Uh, come by whenever you know it's not an official summons, just whenever you get the opportunity. Uh, so that way we can further examine the pearl. And uh, I did want to let you know that uh, while you were getting uh, your permits authorized, we did go ahead and confiscate those cannons. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. All right, very good. And then he does a, he says good day to you, does his little quick heel turn, and heads on out. <laughs> so in addition to that, while you guys are eating, a slender figure with a white cloak robe over some scale armor approaches your table. Sits down in front of Kilbin. And she looks at you and says, I have a job for you. Correct. What do you do, I'm Kilbin? listening. As I assume I'm sitting at the table, Kilbin. You know this trick? No, he doesn't, which is why he's just who I'm looking for. You're not a local. You're well-equipped. 
and there's just because of political complications in this town it's best if i were to ask an outsider to handle this well at least she can tell talent when she sees it i say it's like so Pop where's Pop. the monster well it's uh <laughs> depends on what you mean by monster but uh i since you mentioned it i am a member of the monster hunters guild and there is an issue that's been affecting some of my guildmates. You see, since you're not from here, I assume you don't know, but there's not a whole lot to do here. So sometimes people find certain ways to unwind that are dubious at best. They, um, they start taking Azure, uh, which... Do you got which uh, anyone wants to roll a medicine check when she says that to see if you know what she's talking about? Sure. Can I roll with advantage since I went to college with probably a lot of drugs? <laughs> sure. Uh, I mean, sure. In any, if you have insight, maybe <laughs> then something. Medicine check, you said. Sure, medicine, or if you think you've got a good skill for it. Yeah, I think medicine would make most sense for me. I did not see what I rolled. <laughs> It's being a little funky, yeah. 15. Oh, I just, no, I had my uh, thing covering the screen. Oh, hey, I actually got a decent roll. <coughs> nice. All right, Gideon, did you want to roll? Okay, oh. <laughs> so, so everyone, well, but everyone has a plus one to it, and. Roll 20 still hates me. You can see, <laughs> something's never changed. Meanwhile, a bee buzzes by Gideon's ear. <laughs> Gideon's just like, you know, just like, what are drugs? They're taking what? <laughs> Alright, so everyone but Kai and Gideon, uh, upon hearing her mention Azure, knows that it is a type of <laughs> mushroom that is dried and then ground into a fine powder. So called because, for, for two reasons, because the mushroom itself <laughs> is uh, a vibrant blue, <laughs> and also because prolonged use can cause a condition known as blue lung. It's like, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, some people just snort it, some people smoke it, some people eat it, you know, but that's effectively what it is. It's like a, would it be like an upper, downer, hallucinogen? Uh, it's, I wouldn't say, it's not a hallucinogen, I'd say it's more of a, like a, they use it to unwind, I'd say it's more of a downer. Oh, like LSD or just shrooms? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I mean, my, a very mild hallucinogenic effect, but not, not. Okay. Super serious. Gotcha. So she goes on to explain. Normally, normally there aren't any long, like severe side effects or withdrawals from taking Azure. It's normally safe, but lately, even people who try it once get withdrawal sickness. And people who've been taking it long term, well, <laughs> a couple of my guildmates. We've been taking it for a long time. One of them they tried to. Uh, I'm getting feedback on someone's mic. I'm hearing myself. Through, I'm hearing myself through somebody. Oh, is it me again? I don't know. It's but it stopped. So we'll, we'll address it again. It comes back up. Anyways, so she says yes. One of my guild mates, Heath, tried this. He tried to bear the withdrawals, and it, he ended up dying. So they've whatever's happened, something with it has changed, and it's it's not just bad news for us because we need to be sharp on our hunts, but it's it's bad news for everybody. Is do what I know if this is a, like an illegal substance or is it just like an actual thing that people just do for recreation? Uh, surprisingly, it is not illegal. Okay. Um, but yeah. It's 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 like a gray area kind of. It's one of those things where you know, it's not good. Pe general people like there's social stigma against it, but there's no legal consequences for it. Is it possible someone's tampering with the batch, spiking it, getting the wrong mushrooms? New guy grabbed the wrong toadstool, ground it up with the rest of it. That sounds reasonable. Do you know where it's coming from? She says, actually, I've got a pretty good idea. I like you guys. You're smart. <coughs> and she directs you to a ref this uh, refining den 
this this refinery slash uh, for lack of a better term drug den uh, outside of town. Is she just directing us, or is she actually taking us there? Uh, well, she's not. She says we can't. The guild can't be seen to involve be involved because of local politics. That's ah, why gotcha. she, you know. That's why she wanted outsiders to take a look into this. Gotcha, gotcha. Does anyone and, who would know that the guild that the guild members are taking this bad blood, something along that nature? It's it's just it's complicated. There's powerful people behind the production of Azure, and it would look really, and like you said, it would look really bad if it got out that you know, our guild members were taking it you know, to take the edge off after a hard day of putting our life on the line to protect everyone from these creatures. Well, you also got to think. Big, powerful types need to make coin, get people addicted more easily. Probably so. It's very likely one of them might have spiked their own batch. Who's to say? Well, I leave that to you guys. Um, <coughs> if you find anything out, um, I'm hoping you can get you can find some sort of definitive proof, some sort of evidence, maybe an antidote. Uh, but I'll be I'll be here when you get back. But if you get caught, I'm I have to pretend I don't know you. With all due respect, I don't need to come off as cross, and I think I kind of speak for her here. What's in it for us? Aside from uh, the satisfaction of doing <laughs> a good yeah. deed. Hey, I mean, besides that, <laughs> don't, get, don't get me wrong. Good deeds don't pay the bills. She glances around. <laughs> hundred apiece, fifty down up front. <laughs> I just kind of shrug, look at the group. Well, I, I want to meet with the monster of the guild. Well, Might be then. Well, I'll tell you, she says, well, we'll tell you what, big guy. You take care of this, and you're practically guaranteed to get in. Nothing else, it's an in for you. Worst case scenario, we're doing a good deed. So, does that, does that work for you guys? Fifty now, fifty when you're more when you're done. Can't speak for everyone. I'm so it. All right, going once. Hmm? Going twice. All right, she hands each of you fifty gold. And slinks off into the corner to enjoy her breakfast. Wishes you Godspeed. All right, so what would you guys like to do now? That is a great question. Uh, did she give us a time frame on which this needs to be done by? Or is it just uh, sooner the better sort of thing? Sooner the better. Okay. Well, we have some other matters of business to attend to before we can get started on this, but it seems like a reasonable deal. If nothing else, it's a good deal. If nothing, if best case scenario, he our friend Kilbin here gets an end with his monster hunting friends. If I can get in with the guild, they can give me information on where the monsters are. Then I can go hunt them. <coughs> I, being members of the guild of guilds, also has many other benefits besides just the heads up. I mean, there's help. There's lodging. There's food. There's most guilds. If you remember, will help put you out for at least a couple of nights. That does beat sleeping in a bedroll. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <clears throat> uh, well, nothing else. Kai, you said you needed to get your uh, some kind of identification made up, correct? Yep. 
would I have a general idea of where we would who where who we talk to to like get an ID essentially? Yeah, they they explained all of that to you. <laughs> okay. When you guys were there before. Oh, that's right. Nothing else. I mean, like I said, it'd be good to have someone who vouches for you. Sounds good to me. All right, so you guys want to go take care of that first? We do that. Uh, yes. All right. <clears throat> you make your way downtown, and you arrive at the. Yeah, offbeat. It's you. I'm. I'm. When you're doing push to talk or something, my voice is coming through you. Oh, weird. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can fix this real quick. Or maybe when I'm talking, the it's the push to talk is picking it up and thinking it's you. Is it still doing it now? Uh, it's not doing it for me, but you sounded terrible. Try saying something else. Offbeat. Whatever you did, you screwed your microphone. Okay. Better? There we go. Got All right. It. Okay. All right. Yeah, let me you know make... if start doing feedback again. Okay, we'll do. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, you guys make your way downtown to the Registrar of Identification. You head on in, and because you're there bright and early, uh, there's only a couple people in line ahead of you. <laughs> I'll get in line. All right, they don't take uh, too terribly long, and they finish up, and then next window is available. All right, I'll walk up to the window uh, and say, uh, hello, I need to get my ID. Name? I know. I know. Is that N-O-H? Just N-O. And oh, okay, all right. Uh, I'm not finding you in here. Did you lose your ID or? I've never had an ID. Oh, I see. All right. Uh, well, just uh, head through that door, and he points to a door to the left, and uh, we'll have to. Put you just to full disclosure. We're gonna put you in a zone of truth and ask you some questions, um, <coughs> and uh, we'll be able to issue you an ID. Hey, sounds good. Um, I'll, I'll walk in that door. <laughs> okay. All right. You head on in, and there's a a mage in there who hands you a, a, a piece of parchment on a steampunk style clipboard. And says, fill this out, please. It asks you your name, age, race, uh, place of birth, so on and so forth. Okay. I'll do that then and hand it back. All right. Step into the zone of truth. Step over here, please, into the zone of truth. I do so. <coughs> all, all right. What is your full name? I know. Okay. Species? Water Ganassi. Okay. Age? 19. Place of birth? I don't know, whatever town we started off in. Okay. <laughs> Must be a backwater place. I haven't heard of that one. Okay. Checks out. Um, current residence? Traveler? No permanent address. Okay. All right. All checks out. If you'd step over here, please. Motions towards a, um, a machine. If you'd stand still in front of this machine. <laughs> and uh, behind you on the wall, it has a uh, measure. It has increments of measurement. Uh, if you would please back against the wall so we can have an accurate measurement for your identification. 
All right, and uh, you will see a bright flash momentarily. Do not be alarmed. Uh, try not to move. Right. And then there's a bright, bright flash. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, give us just a, if you want to go back out to the lobby, as soon as your ID is prepared, we will call your name. Okay. All right, a few minutes pass. See, more mostly painless. <laughs> Oh, actually, I forgot to do this. Kai, uh, do you have any charisma or, you know, skills to make you look good? <laughs> I don't know, performance or something? Um, not really, but I'll roll anyway. If you don't have an applicable skill, okay. That works. All right, it comes back out and hands you a... Um, a uh, passport style booklet uh, with your photo and the information you provided, and the photo of you is actually pretty decent. Okay, cool. If you had rolled like a three, you know, uh, it would have been like your eyes were closed or <laughs> you weren't paying attention and you were picking your nose, something like that. So, yeah. And then they said that'll be 50 gold, please. All right, I'll give them the 50 gold I just got. <laughs> Hey, thank you very much. You have a wonderful day, and send you on your way. Yes. Uh oh. Uh, after we leave, uh, I'll say, "Geez, that was kind of expensive." Hey, well, you got off cheap, honestly. Some places they try to out you with a little more extra fees and crap. They try to incur extra crap on it, and they don't even need it. That is, it's annoying. <laughs> Do you want to ask them why it's so expensive? No. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> you have to ask. You have to pay the asking a question fee. <laughs> no. It's the government. <laughs> All right. So you guys are done with that errand. Everyone uh, else mentioned that they wanted to go shopping. So what are you guys looking to buy? I need barrel or not barrels, uh, jugs for rum, and I need uh, a mastiff and a saddle for the mastiff to hold the rum. <laughs> <laughs> Just get with a couple all of this armor. I could also use some help holding things for me. I'd, I'll come along to the kennels. All right, kennels it is. <laughs> Just you wait when I tell them I can install a keg in the side of my golem. <laughs> uh, I think we're gonna... Well, so I'm assuming they went shopping while we went to the ID place. So uh, at this point, we're just gonna walk around town and see if we find them. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it shouldn't be too hard. You know, they mentioned that they were going to the kennels. Mm -hmm. Um... If you ask anyone, they'll mention that, you know, because they do have live animals that the kennels are just outside of town. Uh, that's where they tend, that's where they keep all the livestock, everything else like that. Yeah. Yeah. If there's any, like, if along the way, if there's any kind of like blacksmith or scrap dealer of some sort, I will potentially stop by there also. Okay. Well, um, Unless you guys were also planning to buy hounds, we'll 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 knock out the hounds first, if that's okay. That's fine. It'd just be along the way. Yeah. It'd just yeah. All right. You get to the kennels and you see a number of dogs at, like out in a fenced area. They're being put through various training exercises. You see the the steampunk steampunk fantasy eh, fantasy. I swear I can talk. I speak English. I promise. <laughs> steampunk steampunk fantasy version of a cowboy standing nearby, who's seeming to the one who's giving them directions, and it's overseeing their training. Uh, other than that, there is a uh, a wooden building that you can 
Go into if you want. Seems to be where they have the front desk and everything. Well, let's yeah, go see I'll what's happening. I'll desk. push through the door. Sorry, you were both at the... So I, I assume you both were saying that you were going in. Yes, we clamber over each other to get in first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get one with spots. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Okay, well, you get in, you get in, and the lady behind the counter says, Good morning, what can I do for you? I'm looking to buy a dog. Okay, what kind of dog? I'm looking for a mastiff that can carry things. What's the oh. biggest dog you have? <laughs> are you are you prompting me to create Clifford the Big Red Mastiff? Okay. <laughs> I mean, we wouldn't say no. <laughs> Not dying. Just an elephant painted red. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> They're charging massive prices for it. You know what? I wouldn't say no. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying to we find. We have this capybara the size of a dog. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, if Oof. you want to reskin it, absolutely. Um, it just won't be able to do like the bite and stuff. Uh. I'm trying to figure. I'm trying to find their like the cost for these. I remember that a mastiff was twenty five gold. I don't remember. Where I read that or heard that, I think it was in a D&D video about how underrated they were. Yeah, the best cheap items, and one of them was the Mastiff. Especially for halflings, because then you can ride it, except... Yep, correct. So, 25 GP. Okay, she says, Okay, well, the ones that we have that are trained up and ready for sale are right this way. And she leads you into a different area of the kennels. Uh, so, so go and take a look at them and tell me which one you think you would like best. So you walk through, you see I various the dogs. Yeah, you see, you see some that seem <laughs> um, have various personalities and different color patterns, and some are more shy, some are more friendly, some seem like assholes, you know, the whole the whole range. Well, size isn't important, but I do plan on riding this dog. If yeah. you have a recommendation, I'd be happy to take it, ma'am. Oh, well, they're all thoroughly trained to do just about any job you need. So just go. Uh, uh, okay, I'll just let. I'll uh, let me let me drop the veil. Describe your dogs. <laughs> uh, we'll say he's large, brown, roughly my height. Okay. And I, I want slobbery. one that's like a. I, I want one that's really strong, but not very smart. <laughs> A real, a real dopey, <laughs> strong dog. Well, you you find one that's just it's it's. You you find one chasing its own tail, but it's not putting a lot of effort into it. I, I'm not gonna lie. After you said that, I immediately turned around and looked at my dog. <laughs> she says, "She says, all right. Well, our mastiffs are twenty five gold apiece." Not a problem yeah, at all. Yeah, I pay for one. All right. Let me look up how much uh, armor and barding and all that stuff is real quick. I'll you a link of it. Oh, thank you. You get a point of inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> Dun, dun, dun. All 
Okay. Dang it. Mountain should Vista. only be a second, but I got a AFK. Okay. That's fine. I'm looking up the, the stuff. Ah, okay. Barding. Duh. Okay, any type of armor shown on the armor table in the can be purchased as barding. The cost, however, is four times the equivalent of armor made for humanoids, and it weighs twice as much. Oof. Uh, saddle. <laughs> Let's see. Military saddles brace the rider, helping keep your seat on an active mount in battle. It gives you advantage on any check you make to remain mounted. Let's see. Vehicle proficiency. If you have proficiency of a certain kind of vehicle, land or water, you get a proficiency bonus, so check your... That doesn't really apply. All right. Mastiffs are have a speed of 40 feet, and they're, they weigh, can carry 195 pounds. Uh, they do have carts. I don't know if they mean this for the Mastiff. And so saddlebags just pull a little itty-bitty cart? Yeah. Can we get it from a little red truck? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I will, uh, I'll share this. He can have the cart it. and the saddlebags. I mean, if it can, as long as it doesn't go over the, as long as it can actually pull it, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so while we're waiting for cats to go back, I'll come back. I will go ahead and drop the link that Megan was so kind to send me. So you guys can figure out what all you want to, what you got want to get. This is the player's handbook on D&D Beyond, so you have to have... Oh. Okay, if you oh. don't have D&D Beyond, let me know and I'll just tell you things. Here, you know what? All right, here, I'm just going to do this. Uh, that's not great either, damn it. That's unhelpful. <laughs> right, I'm going to do this, actually. Okay, da-da-da. <clears throat> to help you with your doggo shopping. And if someone decides they do not want a doggo and they want something else, uh, these are the ones that are in there, and we can discuss that as well. So I'm guessing I'd want the pack saddle, right? I would I would assume so, since you're not planning to ride it. And then how many saddlebags does it need? I mean, probably just like a set of saddlebags would be adequate. So I only need to buy one saddlebag, and then I've got enough for every, all the rum I'm gonna store in it. I, I, th I thought we had a conversation about this, Steve. You can carry one keg realistically, <laughs> and if you go shopping for one, we might be able to come up with some sort of flask for you. Is it possible to get it like uh, instead of a bag of holding, it's a flask of holding? Yeah, something like that. See, that's 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 a good idea. That's not what I thought of, but that's a great idea. 
See, in this way, whenever you're in town, you can just spend 50 gold to put 500 gallons of whatever in your flask. Or oh, how yeah. much booze is. You drink right. 500 gallons of booze. I don't well, think there's a lot. There's... We don't know when we'll be back in town. Yeah, there's it has a lot to last of, uh... at least a week. <laughs> I mean, Jesus. let's, let's, let's that... look up, you know what? Let's look up bag of holding real quick. Let's look that up. <laughs> You can drink 500 gallons of booze in a week. Oh my god. That sounds like a challenge, Kilbin. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we like to party. Party hardy. You said your liver did too until it died. <laughs> I'm on my third liver. It's fine. That's why they make restoration spells. <laughs> oh god. I guess greater restoration. Then I could keep on drinking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, why does this stuff never ever have the damn price? There's got to be a god that's the equivalent of Dionysus that grants that <laughs> prayer. I mean, probably. All right, how much does that? How much does that cost, Megan? Um, it's an uncommon, so like I think it's three hundred. Is it fifty or a hundred? A hundred. Would be a hundred. Okay. Common would be a hundred. Right. You can you can instead, Steve, if you want to go and buy instead of endless water a decanter of endless hooch, you can do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here, sorry. Can we still geyser the hooch? <laughs> oh God. Because <laughs> that would be hilarious. Lord help us for what we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> like I get why you couldn't because that's just a waste of good hooch but also blasting someone with a water gun of hooch sounds like fun <laughs> yeah it's it would be completely identical except instead of water it would create hooch also I don't want to hear it from you Jekyll and your uh, spray of mayonnaise but, uh, <laughs> but uh what what was the price for it wasn't it a hundred gold? Hundred, yeah. I believe. Oh, I can hand wave that you went and bought one of those at some point. <laughs> uh, oh, so I can keep my money? Sweet. You can know that you bought it. So it's still a hundred gold. You know, I just wasn't going to make you go an RP out going to the magic shop unless you really want to. I mean, who knows what else the magic shop has? <laughs> Oh, okay, I paid my money, but I'm keeping the dog, and I'm uh -huh. still getting the millet or the the pack saddle and the saddlebags okay. and a wagon. How much money do we have? Yes. Okay, so let's see, a hundred. Yeah, you're broke now, but you got everything. I think I I have a hundred and seventy-one gold left. Does that include with buying the uh, the thing, buying all that stuff, the dog, the saddle, heart? Well, you are yeah. you getting a saddle? Yeah, yeah, the pack saddle. Okay, it lets me in that I need that to have saddlebags. Gotcha. So all I'm right. still gonna put heavy stuff on the dog, just not rum anymore because <laughs> I mean I bought the dog. Yeah. I mean, so like, so all said and done, including buying the decanter of endless hooch, is that you have 171 gold left, or have you not bought it yet? And we're doing that in a minute. Yep. Yep, the witch. No, I have 171 left. Hey guys, you had a lot of money saved up. You must have been around 300 then. I bought everyone rooms. We should have like 365 or 375, if I recall right, if you haven't spent anything. Um, oh, but I started with 10. I'm at 344. <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys got the 1,000 for the boat, right? Oh, did you guys sell the boat yet? No, we had to wait. We had to wait to find a buyer in the tavern. We just got him in our name. Ah, okay. Well, once you sell the boat, then you can even have have even more money. 
All the money in the world. No, I'm not too concerned about getting this 100 gold. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not cheating. We just got paid well. Fair enough. <laughs> I know. I'm not, I don't think you are. I'm just trying to follow it in my mind because I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I had to step away for a second, but I got the military saddle when we were at the, the pet shop. All right, cool. But yeah, you... I'd be up for going to browse the magic item shop since I know we're flush now. You guys now have your, your doges. Uh, do you want to sell the boat first before you go to the shop? Or do you want to, you know, what you want to I guess do? that makes sense. I uh, guess what I've been able to find a buyer in the tavern fairly easily. Uh, yeah. they, they direct you down to the docks and, uh, to say to look for, um, Steely Pete, that he might be in the market for either a ship or some parts. Yeah, then I would probably sell the boat, <laughs> uh, within re so long as it's a reasonable deal. Okay. Well, he, so we're going to, we're going to, we're, we're shifting stuff around a little bit. Let's say we, you went back over there. Okay. And so... So Pete's looking at the boat. He's like, wow, that's a real piece of shit. Yeah, you're not wrong. That thing, it, it got us to where we needed to be, which wasn't a deserted island. Hmm. Yeah, tell you what, though. Water works good. Kept her in great condition. Nothing else, I mean. Yeah, she's, she's a shit box, but she's got a good heart. All right, let me take a look at that engine. Aye. Right head. <clears throat> All right. He he checks the engine. He looks it over, nodding to himself, seemingly with approval. And he says, "Well, I can't do much with the boat, but maybe this engine be worth something." That's Give you kind five. Of Oops, sorry. Go ahead. Give you five hundred. You do seven fifty. Mm -hmm. I think I can. Right. Seven fifty. It is. I think I can work with that. Thank you. I'll shake his hand and I'll uh, <laughs> just kind of whistle and have the uh, have the uh, the golem come crawling off of where the normal <laughs> masthead would or the the bowsprit would be, and meet up with me on the dock. He says, "Holy!" I thought the golem was on the other boat. I well, I assume they were fairly close together. I don't know if he's on. Yeah, that's a good question. Was yeah, I was under the impression I was under the impression he was guarding the new boat. Yeah. Oh, okay, then never mind. Scratch that whole bit. Sorry. Because <laughs> yeah, if he was going to offer to buy your golem, yeah, I knew, I knew it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, yeah, if he, if the golem is well, actually, I would be getting the golem anyways because I have other things I need to do with that. So yeah, I'd be calling the golem over. All right, and he pays you, pays you the gold. And you sign over the paperwork, and it's a done deal. Yep. It's a pleasure doing business with you. <laughs> you as well. Hopefully, you get more use out of it than we will. We got ourselves a new thing to play around with, if you will. Ah, very good, good, good on you. He looks very satisfied, like he got you know, like he basically robbed you blind. But he's <laughs> his way. little does he realize all the thing he bought was a motor. <laughs> the most of the rest of the ship was it, it was a lot. It was functional. <laughs> oh, well, what do you do? Yeah, no, I guess I don't know what the motors would be worth, but so yeah, maybe. Well, there you go. You got your you got that extra gold, so. So yeah, I don't know. If, are we backtracking a bit? So this is before everyone went shopping, or is this? I, I mean, we're we have to backtrack a bit because like you guys went, we you guys were already off doing the uh, getting Kai's ID while they were on, you know, while they're at the the dog place. If anything, after that, you could have gone down to the marina, and then they could be heading to the magic shop, and you guys could meet up there. Yeah, that could that yeah, that work. All right. So yeah, seven fifty split. One fifty. One fifty each. Did 
Is that what it comes out to? Yeah, 750 divided by 5 is 150. Yep. Sounds right to me. I got you until pre-algebra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't do algebra either. Don't feel bad. All right. Okay. You head on over to the magic shop, which whimsically has uh, their, a roof painted to resemble a mushroom. <laughs> hmm, I wonder what trailer we've watched recently. It's... Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> So a little guy wearing a uh, mushroom as a hat walking no, the place. No, no. He does have a he has a, a long a thin fellow with a long scraggly beard, and he is uh, enjoying a pipe. What's in his pipe? Huh? What's he smoking? Um, we're, su we're supposed to be looking for that blue stuff, blue azure. So I'm curious if he's addicted to that and smoking that, or if it's just regular tobacco. No, I got it. Uh, it's it's um regular pipe tobacco. Well, a good call. We probably should uh, ask around town a little bit for that as well. All right. So that uh, the <clears throat> Shit, hold on here. Prefer decanter of endless booze. Let's see. Uncommon. Okay. All right. So this, uh, you get into the shop and he's like, oh, what can we do for you? <coughs> uh, do all of us get there at the same time or? Well, that depends on how you guys decided to split up. I know Creed went off to sell the boat. Um, yeah. I would have gone with him. Okay. I'd have to meet up with them there at some point if they're going to give them their money, but <laughs> otherwise, yeah. So I'm I'm going to say that uh, Katz, uh, Kilbin, and Gideon would arrive at the magic shop a little bit before you. Yep. And uh, the, he, uh, he carries up through Uncommon... He carries up through uncommon items, so uh, I don't know if that means anything to you here. This uh, here's a list of them. If I could copy a link and not push the wrong button, I was gonna say I think if you go, I don't know if you ever looked at a uh, donjon, but they have an actual yep. magic. Yep. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yep, it doesn't actually list the prices, but if you find something interesting, I can find the price. Fair enough. Yep, he carries uh, up through Uncommon, so that Steve can get his 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 endless hooch. Speaking of endless hooch, uh, Kelvin, uh, amulet of the drunkard. Yep, and oh. that's just what I plan to buy. <laughs> <laughs> amulet of the drunkard. Yes. Yeah. Uh, once per day, when you drink some hoot, you heal 4d4 plus 4 hit points. Sounds oddly familiar. <laughs> and it's almost <laughs> like we've had that item before. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I, I want one. How much it's, is that? It's uncommon, so anywhere from 50 to 100 or something like that. 
And they also have a tankard of sobriety. <laughs> <laughs> For punishment. <laughs> oh, hey, they have elven chain. Oh, that's rare, though. Might be a little expensive. Yeah, he's not super, well, like, you know, it's not a, the big city or anything, so the best he has is through Uncommon. Okay. If, yeah, if you can afford it. So, d does he have does he have one of those amulets of the drunkard? Uh... Let me see. It's actually not on this list. Maybe it's in a, it has to be in a different thing. Hold on. I'm just looking at the D and D Beyond list. Yeah. Sorted. Yeah. Let me look at that. Ba, ba, ba. I mean, uh... I'm not seeing that on Beyond either, but I've heard of it. I know what you're talking about. Which item? I, the Amulet of the Drunkard. I'm not seeing it, but I've heard of it. I know what you, exactly what you're talking about. I just can't find it. I got you. Okay, you'll send him the link. Yep, I was just about to. <laughs> Thank you. It is uncommon, so he would have one. How much is it? Uh... <clears throat> Listen, this is the first time I've run a game where you guys went. To, anyone has gone to a magic shop, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I was curious how it would play out if there was going to be like a few items or what. Did Bo just knock over something? She just dropped a hammer on her own head. <laughs> Are you okay? Oops. Amazing. She is. You know how he said that he wants a tough dog with uh, not very many brains? Yeah. She's right here. Come get her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she's just wagging her tail like she's the happiest thing right now. Oh my god. Are you I'm judging my dog harshly. You good? So mean. She tries her best. <laughs> she's excited that she did that. <laughs> like she's just wagging her tail like a maniac right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just gotta love really dumb dogs. There's just something ad just adorable about a really dumb dog. <laughs> she's a she's an interesting case to say the least. Okay, I need to find the cost of something with like something relatively similar because I still cannot find the. I found the description that is that Meg well Megan sent me the description. But it doesn't seem like it has a price on it. No, Unless I just don't understand how pricing oh, okay. works. And I sent you a link in your DMs of the cost of magic items, and it gives you a range, so it's up to you to pick something in that. Yeah, and can... some are worth more than others because a bag of holding is technically uncommon, but it's also one of the most useful items you can get. So, so you can that's up to DMs. You could see it's either a super common thing, like it's a super common uncommon that everyone has any kind of money has, or it could be like nobody has them, they're really valuable. Uh, super not helpful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 5e, where they go like, you know what, DM, rules don't actually exist, it's all you playing make pretend. My, 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 what I sometimes will do is I'll take the base price and then decide how rare I want them to be in the world, and then you add price or decrease price off of that. Well, this does sort of make me immortal. 
But on I mean, the other hand, it doesn't it really has the drawback of every time, every time I'm healing, I'm getting more and more plastered in the middle of combat. Also, the <laughs> amulet only works once a day. Yeah, as funny as it would be for you to go drunken fist monk. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's, it refreshes at dawn. I believe it is. Oh shit! Interesting. All right, so. Uh, I will say the amulet of the drunkard is probably 200 gold. The flask of hooch, I'll say, is 100 gold. A flask of endless hooch. Yeah, I'd, I'd buy both of those. Meanwhile, I'm trying on a cloak of protection and ask the shopkeep how much they want for it. Is it... Okay, uncommon. It is a plus one AC and a plus one to saving throws, FYI. But yes, it is uncommon. Okay, that doesn't sound... Plus one AC and saving throws, that's it? Like, no resistances or skill buffs? Nope. 150. 150. I will point out that will make me 19 AC. I I know. <laughs> okay, then yes, very much so. <laughs> that goes I'll back to one of those. the one fifty without even trying to to bargain. Someone someone has to be able to hang with Kilbin when he's getting his shit kicked in. <laughs> I. Somehow he's got like some generic like shop music playing while you're shopping. <laughs> Is it around any holiday season? No. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> do, 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 do. That's loud. Was that what the shop music sounds like? <laughs> it's just that over and over. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Would not be in there very long. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> Anyone else making any purchases? Um, oh, uh, yeah. yes. I put a few in the... Sorry, go ahead. I'm still looking. I just wanted to make sure we didn't leave the shop. Okay. Yeah, While I... everyone else is still shopping, I'll just be practicing writing my new doggy named Dogs. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be real interesting when he gets a bird. Um, oh. If we've gotten there at this point... Um... I'm yep. gonna ask how much a bag of holding is. Let's see, bag of holding. <laughs> that is also uncommon, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. I mean, you guys have the dog, but a bag of holding <laughs> about, let's say, on the high end, because you can do some really messed up stuff with it, I'm gonna say 500. Like, if you know what you're doing, you could do some ridiculous stuff with it. Hmm? How much were the Ring of Protection? He got a cloak, I believe. Yeah, he got a cloak of protection. I think Ring is uh, rare. 
Yeah, just because so. cloak is, slots yeah. are actually pretty useful. Speaking of cloak slots, since we're going to... Um, I'm going to say, since we uh, might be underwater, can I get a cloak of the manta ray? Is it common or uncommon? It's uncommon. While wearing the cloak with its hood up, I can breathe underwater and I have a swimming speed of 60. Putting the hood up costs an action. Okay, that's 500 also. Katz's cloak was 150, which maybe I was a bit too generous. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I, I do not have I do not have that. And coins so... jingling. Reed, can you distribute uh, the money we got from the selling the ship? Oh, right, of course. And I'll go ahead and walk around and give it everyone 150 gold apiece. I <laughs> hope there was no qualms about me selling the old the one. It was kind of a chunk of junk, and I thought we'd not said agreed to that. Sounds good to me. How about a Bloodwell vial? That's uh, it has m multiple types of rarity, and that depends on the buff. But for a uh, uncommon, it's a plus one to my spell casting DC, and when I take a short rest, I get some sorcery points back. Like how many? Uh, five. But I can only use it once per day, or I get those points back once per day. How many points do you have normally? Depends on the level. Currently, since I level. Three, we said, or my yeah, three. three. I got uh three sorcery points, so I wouldn't even get all five back yet. Okay, that answers my question: is if it would like push you over your max? Nope, it, uh, uh, you can't go above max. Okay, I got it. So it's not like temporary HP. It's just on a short rest. Okay, so it's it's like almost pseudo warlock ish, kind of. Yeah. Uh, five hundred. He's realized how powerful magic items are. <laughs> <laughs> so I put three in the chat that I would be looking at. The movable rod, eyes of the eagle, and the periaptive closure. Let's see. Move rod is basically just that. It's a rod that when activated does not move <laughs> unless you are damn near god to your strength. Eyes of the Eagle give you advantage on perception checks, and you can see make out very minute details in clear weather. And the periaptive wound closure uh, is when you, while wearing the pendant, you stabilize whenever you are dying at the start of your turn. In addition, whenever you roll a hit die to regain hit points, you double the number of hit points it restores. I believe they're all uncommon. Okay, let's see. A movable rod. Yeah, is uncommon. Uh, since the, so the shopkeeper saw you come in and start hanging out coin, uh, <laughs> he's 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 going high with all of his requests. Interesting. Uh, the rod would also be five hundred. The eyes of the eagle, that. You know, that one requires attunement, so that one might be a little bit less. That one probably would be closer to 400. And okay. uh, Perry apt. Also, an attunement one. Yeah. He'll also he'll part with that one for our. Since I have to come up with an arbitrary number, and I feel like being whimsical, <laughs> he'll part with it for um, three hundred sixty-nine gold. Ooh, bad enough for my own heart. You've got a deal. I'll take the parry up. Okay. Just because it leaves me with a bit extra, and I do need a little extra side cash. And yeah, so you said 369? Yeah. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna say, do you have another one of those? And I'll point to the cloak <laughs> of protection. Yeah, he's 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 got a couple, yeah. He's got a couple more. Sure, here you are, young lady. 
That's 150, right? Correct. Yeah. Would buy a bag of hold holding, but all I got is 300 on me. I'll front uh, 200 for the bag of holding. And uh, I'll put back the Manta cloak and go like, how much for this cloak of billowing? Right, so I'll, buy the, <laughs> I'll get the bag of holding instead of the cloak of protection. Okay. The cloak of billowing? Let me see. It is a common <laughs> magic item, and all it does is billow. <laughs> 50 gold. Because it's functional. It just looks cool. 50. Exactly. <laughs> We're just, just saying, uh, Kilvin, you, you, you do look really good in the, the armor of smoldering. <laughs> also a nice, cool one. Uh, so... Armor of smoldering. It's basically just armor that smokes all the time. <laughs> yes. That's funny. Okay. I'm done shopping. I'm going to walk out with my cloak billowing like Snape from Harry Potter. Just <laughs> every time I turn around, that thing's going to billow. <laughs> Dear God, and I thought his ego wouldn't even get even more inflated. <laughs> I, it has not even begun to inflate, thank you very much. Let us stop talking. Every time you do, I feel a sense of awe now. <laughs> you should be in awe. I am awesome. <laughs> All random villagers start applauding. <laughs> Is there any pedestals you could stand up on besides the one you've already put yourself on? <laughs> if you find me a taller one, I will gladly stand on it where I belong. <laughs> Be careful you don't hurt your neck looking down here. <laughs> if you'd go, I wouldn't have to. <laughs> I, I better if I stay out of your sight. I don't think I want you staring at me. <laughs> I'm assuming I just have my golem like waiting outside the shop to not, you know, create oh, yeah. too much disturbance inside. <laughs> it absolutely does not fit inside, so yes. That yeah, that's fair. Uh, which reminds me, I, let me go update your golems. You put a new token for it. I did, yeah. Okay. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. I should just update that on roll 20. I think I can just select the existing one and change it, maybe. Perhaps, perhaps not. Uh, well, whatever. We'll figure it out. Hmm. Yeah, it's all good. All right, uh, uploaded the token. Perfect. All right, so you guys are done shopping, or no? I think so. At least That's for here, anyway. Money. I gotta go. Yeah, I gotta go oh. to a like I said, I gotta go to a blacksmith or junk scrap junkyard type thing for for a little bit, but other than that, I guess before we go, we should maybe ask him if he knows where to buy some of that drug we're investigating. Good point. Uh, not a terrible idea. Cause I, I thought it came from me. <laughs> oh God, the cloak's getting to him. It's a curse. He he seems mildly offended. He says, well, since you're from out of town, I'm going to assume you don't know. But uh, that's not something you just ask people lightly. And no, I wouldn't know where to get any of that. You have to forgive him. The cloak seems to have gotten rid of all the manners he once might have had. Well, you sell potions and other magic items. Who knows what else you deal in? Not to mention, you charge outrageous prices, so you must uh, be somewhat of a crook. You can charge him double next time he comes in. <laughs> I agree with that statement. <laughs> that won't be necessary, because he's banned from my shop. Good day, and he slams the door. <laughs> I will also say good day as well, and turn around billowing cloak and all. 
You sure showed him. <laughs> well, I mean, so he's... his going rate's 500 for a water-breathing cloak? Come on! I guess, as uh, someone who deals probably with this kind of stuff a lot, like, does that actually seem like a good deal, or is those just, like, like standard prices? I mean, it varies quite a bit depending on where you go. But uh, the the tone definitely shifted when you guys walked in and started passing around gold coins. <laughs> to be fair, yeah, I, I, we did kind of walk in flashing money. We, yeah, we. Kai was there. She seemed to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no Kai under the bus. I, I see did not try to barter. <laughs> he made no effort to hide it. So as far as I know, you were like making it rain in the magic shop. Right. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm all about that subtle awesomeness where people are just like, oh, he's actually a badass, or this guy just talks a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, other than that, junkyard, scrapyard, that kind of thing. Um, well, they don't seem to have much uh, of a junk, anything quite like that. You could, could you try inquiring at the general store. Might work. I don't need think super crazy. I just need steel plating and potentially just more. If they have tinier parts for, uh, what should I call it for my tinker ability? Just just ten piece gold piece worth of materials just to construct small clockwork devices. Uh, do music I mean, there starters, is a... fire starters. I mean, if it's if re if really all you're looking for is like a you know basically a tiny pile of scrap metal. There is also a blacksmith if you're not looking for like a specific, like, you know, if you're looking for that, they wouldn't sell that at a general store if you're looking for literally like a pile of scrap. You know, I'm, the scrap would be more for like the, uh, the golem for like his constitution upgrade. I just, he had for his, uh, for my level up last. You golem eat scrap? No, I weld scrap metal onto him as in like a, like armor plating. Make them a little more durable, type thing. <laughs> All right. Well, do you want to go to the blacksmith then, or? Yeah, yeah. Just getting metal that I can mold into my own shape because I do have that those abilities. Well, and it's not particularly difficult to find. In addition to the classic uh, swinging sign in the shape of an anvil, you can hear the sound of the hammer on metal from a good distance. No. Go in, go and we'll wait outside for a minute. Excuse me, sir. You looking to protect yourself or deal some damn <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I suppose it's not me that I'm looking for the protection for, but uh, I appreciate a deal if you have one. Uh, what you got on like old battered up armor things that just aren't functional for normal people anymore? Just scrap mostly. Oh, scrap. Hmm. Well, we do have some in the meltdown. I do keep some on hand to melt down. Uh, how much you need? Uh, I'm assuming a good chunk. Like, uh, how many pounds? Uh, but come with me for a minute. What do you think? <laughs> Professional opinion. And I'll, sh I'll All right. kind of just show him the golem outside and be like, I'd love to kind of cover up that a little bit more. Still kind of skeletal frame a little bit, but not quite all terrible. I, I dare say you're going to need more than just a few scraps for that. I agreed. Tell you what, I'll, uh, I believe I have some sheets of steel. Might help. That would work. Uh, I'm, let's see. I'll be willing to let that, the, I'll be willing to let that go for about five gold a sheet. These mm -hmm. are pretty substantially sized sheets. It's like a <laughs> five by five sheet of steel. Okay. So if he's oh about a, a gold per square foot essentially is what he'll sell you. Okay, so I mean he's 
large, so to so I'd probably need about ten square feet of it, so maybe two sheets, I think, or Okay. Yeah. He's a large creature, yeah, I'll get two sheets then. Alright, and that'll be ten gold. Yeah, we'll pay you that. All right. Do you uh? Did you need a hand uh, shaping it or anything, or you got that under control? I think I got it under control, but I do appreciate the offer. It's nice workmanship. I haven't, I haven't seen anything like that before. Hey, might not for a little while again. Unfortunately, still got to try to make it to the capital city before something goes wrong again. Inevitably. <laughs> oh, sorry to hear yeah. you had hard troubles, but uh, if you need more <laughs> steel, I'm happy to oh. give it to you. Well, I'll keep you in mind. I appreciate it. And who knows? Maybe I'll keep you in mind when things go different. I think when we get to where we're going. Oh, well, I'd be much obliged. Of course, of course. Anything for those who help. Well, he he nods to you appreciatively and heads back into his smithy. Yep. And have the golem carry the steel. <laughs> and that works. Uh, yeah, I figure, like I said, if there's not really a good place to get, like, little scrap, like, looks like some place where you pick up, like, broken watch parts and stuff. It's like, ah, uh, no, I don't have anything quite that small. <laughs> uh, general store might maybe, but that doesn't really seem, seem like the it's... kind of thing this town would have. Yeah, it's a little bit of a specialty piece. I got a little bit, but not enough to do quite what I would like. Hmm. Thank you very much for your time. He says, I'll tell you what, I got a pocket watch here. Interesting. And I appreciate you showing me your work. So I'll tell you what, it's on the house. You sure? Yeah, he just gives you, it's nothing fancy, it's just a steel pocket watch. Yeah, yeah. we'll take it and I'll thank him. And I'll, just because, I'll, I'll, I'll flip him a gold just because I don't feel right just from you. Ah. You're an honest fellow. I appreciate that. But yeah, that's well, about all you're going to find on this island as far as the spring or gears or anything fine. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's better than nothing. And honestly, it's more than I was looking at. It's more than, uh, more than nothing for sure. I'll do quite a bit with this. All right, well, it's getting towards the middle of the day. What would you guys like to do? Oh, uh, while yeah. we're walking around, maybe we'll be keeping an eye out for anyone who may be showing signs of addiction or withdrawal. <laughs> I mean, I I will remind you that she did basically tell you where you need to go. Yeah, we don't really need to be announcing. If you want to, I'm just saying, if you want to do that, catch that's fine. But you you do have the necessary information to get where you want to go. But if you want to do that, that's cool. I'm saying, but you don't have to. I just want to make sure I didn't. Uh, <sighs> I want to make sure I didn't miscommunicate that. Okay. If you want to, that's totally cool. I do, actually, in, in hopes to get some more information, but we'll see how it goes. Maybe just a perception check? Sure. Okay, let's see here. Yeah, I mean, you, you do notice a couple people who uh, look a bit twitchy. Uh, they appear to, you know, you do see a couple beggars who appear to be a little bit twitchy. Uh, if you make a medicine check, you might be able to tell if it's because of um, something having to do with a substance they've consumed. Yeah, they're tweaking. They're they are high as kites. <laughs> I'll approach them and, and say they look like they might have some good stuff. They both look at you extremely suspiciously. It's like you don't look like number one, you don't look like the type. Number two, this is ours. <laughs> 
uh, I pretty quickly perceive I won't be getting the information I want from them. It depends. I mean, what depends on what you do next? <clears throat> they think you want their, that you want to take their drugs. <laughs> no, man, you can't have my weed. I'll flip them five silver pieces and, and ask if they know where I could get some. They, uh, they motion towards a, towards an alley on the other side of the street. Can you tell me anything about these people? Um, I mean, just they're, they're wearing rags. They're on, they're not. Oh, no, I meant, I was asking them if they can tell me anything about the seller. Oh. Just, just go over there. There's a. Just go ask for Reed. That's all they say. <clears throat> all right. Does does Reed's information line up with the information the lady gave us earlier? I mean, as far as like where you know she said you guys need. Oh, oh, you're, you're so you're gonna. Are you ask? Hold on, let's back this up. Are you at? So now you're going over there and you're talking to Reed or? Well, I was asking if, because uh, we didn't get any specifics on where the mysterious lady told us to go, if it's the same well, she place. Did. She did. She did. She said to um, that you'd be going to um, a drug den on the outskirts of town. Ah, and this is, is not the outskirts of town. Okay. Yeah, this is not quite it. Um, I'll, I'll look to the others and tell them it must be just a reseller and we'll continue on. It's a very professional way of putting it, but yes. <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard a drug dealer referred to so professionally before. <laughs> All jobs have a purpose. I mean, if you do want to talk to Reed, you know, you, you can. He might give you more information. He might not. It's up to you. I'm going to opt no, out of talking to Reed. If somebody else wants to, they can go for it, but I am not going to do that. I have zero charisma. You uh, have charisma, but I have no interest in this Reed person. He seems like a bad dude. You, you don't want me talking to him. Yeah, he's probably my, with, with my charisma. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> I'm sorry, who are we talking to again? <laughs> they're, they're trying to decide. No, 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 want. I know. I was, I was just being in character because I'm like not paying attention. That would be like doing my own thing. I mean, Creed, if you want to try to push the truck dealer for information, <laughs> you're welcome to do so. <laughs> no. They just look at these guys. Do they, 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 are, they look twacked out of their ass. Yeah, pretty. Yeah, they are. Poor things. <laughs> just walk away. All right, so midday, do you want to set out towards the well, location you were given, or do you... Well, Creed... <laughs> Creed is a, sort of a doctor. At least he has a high medicine skill, so if we could get our hands on some of those drugs, we I... could uh, potentially analyze them and see if we could figure out if it's being poisoned or if it's magic, or what the hell's going on with it. We appreciate your uh, <laughs> your uh, confidence in me, but I'm, I'm no doctor. I, I know a little bit about stuff, but not, not quite as much as some. I'll take, I can do what I, I'll take a look and see what I can figure out, but I, I can't make any promises. All right, so... All right, so you guys are about okay. So since it sounds like we're about ready to head that way towards the towards the drug den, uh, let's take a five minutes. So anyone needs to use the restroom, get a snack, and then we will proceed when we come back. Yeah, I appreciate your confidence. <laughs> I only got a plus two in medicine. <laughs> it's you, the Nord. No, I'm a. I'm uh, a intelligent all I know fellow. is that you, you and I were dissecting a corpse, and you looked like you knew what you were doing. That's fair. I, I, I would say I'm educated, but that's about the best I can give. At uh, the best on that, <laughs> I actually am proficient in medicine. 
So I suppose that is something. I'm just not the most... The, the weird thing about it is mis, medicine's a wisdom thing. Kind of weird. Like, you'd think medicine would almost be intelligence. I guess, granted, also intimidation could also be strength, but that's one of those weird ones. <laughs> All right, I'm going to grab something to drink real quick. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah, I've always, I've always wondered that, too. I think the reason is because... Um... So clerics are wisdom casters, so your clerics generally have high wisdom and uh, most of the time low int. But, so then people were like, hold on, why does the cleric have a shit medicine skill? And that was the reason. Fair enough. Alrighty. Oh. oh, we lost someone. Who did we lose? Oh, we lost cats. Huh. Oh, dang it. I sat down and I have to pee. <laughs> I went to go to the bathroom. I think she's gonna hop up on the bottle. at the same time. I was peeing on her head. <laughs> I swear to God, our animals are special. <laughs> we have special needs animals. Hey, Bing Bang. Go lay down. What? Go lay down. Uh. All right, we're about ready to go, or? Oh, I'm back. Oh, we lost cats. Yeah, cats bounced like the second, not long after. Came back the first time for a break. That's left him for uh, okay, he's yeah, he's, yeah, he says he's going to be back in a minute. Oh, okay. What the fuck, Roll20? <laughs> Cats, you're alive! Hey, yeah, I tried checking the call from my phone, and uh, that kicks you off from. Oh, you're no, good. You're good. You're good. You're good. 
I'm still staging some stuff, so you're good. I say I think people are kind of still a wall. Man, I was trying so hard to get y'all to to borrow some money from me. <laughs> I felt like I couldn't directly offer, being I left the shop. But oh, I gave two hundred to uh, Kai for that a bag of holding. I was just looking at prices for those things. Like the, really, the one I I mean the eyes of the her eagle. Eyes of the Eagle are one I wanted, but also the Perry after Wound Clerk is just going to be invaluable. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out how to change the uh, the token for the Golem. Oh, no worries. If you can't get it, it's not a huge... Right now, it's not a huge issue. I There's, a put button, it a... There's a button when I double-click on it that says, Update Default Token, I click it, and it does nothing. Hmm, weird. Are you, do you know how to do it, Chris, or...? Uh, not hundred percent sure, but I can give I, it a try. Yeah. All right, so I, I up the upload at the top says token one. That's the updated token. Gotcha. But don't peek. <laughs> Let's see. So where is his? So Whoa, it has its own it? stat block, right? Or kind of. I mean, I could just, you know what? I could just copy the stats from the existing one. That'd probably be a simpler way to do this. So what I would do, so we go to Golem, edit, remove, click to upload. Oh, I don't have to upload. I need to. Has it already been uploaded, right? It. It has. When I click edit, nothing happens. I have to double click on it. And that's what I was trying to do is update. Oh, okay, default from Art Library. And uh, what's the name of the new token you want to use? Token underscore one. It's the at the top of the up, recent uploads. Oh, yep, there it is. Save changes. Okay, so his golem. Looks like that. Is that what we want? That works. Perfect. Sweet. So yeah, you'll have to delete the other one, because I don't know how to... Yeah, there it go. It went updated. Yeah. Right now, I think it's more skeletal version of that at the moment. <laughs> that's, that's what it's kind of getting built towards. Hmm. All right. Cats, yeah, cats are the back. Yes, sir. I'm just quiet. You're good. All right. Uh, how's everyone coming along? Everyone ready? Yep. Just playing with my cloak. I'm Cast, good to go. Cast, did you I'm just looking, looking up pictures of dogs to try mm -hmm. to make a token. Oh, okay. I got the cloak of protection, which just gives plus one AC and then plus one to saving throws. Oh, never mind then. I was gonna say if it was just the AC, I could potentially transfer that onto something else if you would like. But yeah, my arcane retrofit ability does similar. Uh... Yeah, I can't transfer any properties except for an attack or a damage roll modification, and the original item is destroyed in the process. That's cool to know. Yeah, so if you get... Right. I, I can't do it with weapons unless I get an inventor weapon. In which case, then I can. But otherwise, I can do it with any kind of armor. That's cool. Of equal or lighter value, it appears. Yeah. 
Oh, I can also just uh, convert a set of arm. So, okay. So if you have heavy armor, I can convert it to a lighter type armor. If it's so long as it's magical. Yeah, it is. It is not magical. It's just okay. chainmail. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, that's just... Yeah, so if, like, say you have heavy armor, but you can only use light, I can potentially do that. I can make that... It would still nix the D or the AC from the armor itself to the lower tuck tier, but it would also... But it would keep its... Uh... Magical benefit. It's cool to uh, it's options so, next time. So, quick, uh, mm -hmm. so, Katz, you're riding your dog, correct? Uh, that would be the default state, yes. Okay, so I don't need to make another token for it at this time. Unless you plan on knocking me off him all the time in combat or something, <laughs> which, is, uh, which is an option. I mean, not on your... Well, probably not on your first time out. I mean, that'd be kind of a dick move, damn it. Now I do need to look just in case. All right, fine. Hey. It's not oh. difficult to find. I Something just uploaded a, a Mastiff token in tokens. That works. Okay. Okay, so this is actually something I should bring up to you because it is a put this is a GM's discretion rule. Okay. Oh, it puts in the pink. Uh it says that similar that similar effect can be potentially done with weapons. So if I have like a plus one heavy crossbow, I can turn it to a plus one light crossbow. But it's up to you to test decide if that's allowed or not. So basically I can turn like a heavy weapon into a lighter weapon. Okay, um, does it retain the properties of the heavy weapon? So it only you... retains the magical properties. So if it's okay. a plus, so if it's, and it can only be if it's like a plus one damage, so if it, or plus up to plus three. So if it's like a plus three heavy crossbow, I could convert it down to a plus three light crossbow. So it would have the damage of a light crossbow, but still the plus three. Okay, that that doesn't seem he says now uh, in the moment, not thinking it through. <laughs> that doesn't seem super broken, so that's fine. If it was like the discussion about the rifle with the uh, anti magic ring that was mm. firing cannonballs, oh then, yeah, no, you know, no, 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 nothing like that. No, that this would, would be this would be more like making a found item more useful for another character, essentially, who can't use that heavy of a yeah. Like All right, so um, cats, did you name your mastiff? Its name is Dogs. Dogs, okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, so change it. Uh, I'm just gonna get you if you cannot control it, let me know. You should be able to. Uh, let's see. Does that make you a dog trainer if you help him control it? Okay. That's me. I'm the uh, dog trainer. Kill, oh, kill oh, bin. Bad. <laughs> Kilbin, did you name your dog? I named him Rummy. Rummy. Okay. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Suppose you didn't call him Alky. Alka Terrier. Uh, that's. All right, let me find. Let's see. Tokens. <laughs> it's adorable. So let's see that. Yeah, see, he's got his mouth open and he's just happy. <laughs> Okay, all right, so I'm going to try to do it, because you said to go, Where? so Chris, where do you say it was it to go? To what? Uh, to change the token. Um. So, open the, like, character sheet, like, where you open your character. So, click, like, on the gear. Um, like, when you click once... on... Then go huh. to bio and info. Okay, I'm not seeing that. So, which token are you trying to change? Well, here's the problem, is they both have a Mastiff, so I'm afraid if I edit it for one, it's going to edit it for both. 
Oh, that is a good point. You'd have to basically make Master for One and give it a or Dago and create Dago as an NPC is what I would probably do. Uh, okay, well, you know what? You guys just have two generic Mastiff tokens for right now, and we'll figure it out later. Yeah. So you guys setting out? Yep, we'll sit out. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. Well, from the information I, you were is given... Is it nighttime? Because I assume that we'd uh, wait until night to go to a drug den. It's about midday. And you do know, since um, by the outskirts it is a little bit of a hike, you're going to have to cross part of the salt mangroves to get there, so... <laughs> Up to you. Why don't we stop and have lunch first? Not a bad idea. Regroup, plan out a little. You know, get everything figured out. Alright, sounds good. Where would you like to regroup? The inn? We could pick an inn uh -huh. closer to the other side of town where we need to be. I mean, the town's not, like, gigantic. I mean, there is another inn over there, but you cat's already prepaid. So I'm just going to state, if we're going to be going to this drug den, we also might want to consider kind of face covering. We don't want to necessarily be known. Going to this place while also associating with the Monsters Guild, especially if our friend wants to be invited into it. I feel like covering our faces will just make us more conspicuous. That's fair. Well, I mean, if we're going out at night... You both make good points. Realistically, I think it's a matter of what time we go is what we should do. If we go during the day, we can be inconspicuous and just happen to be in the neighborhood. If we go at night, the less seen, the better. But anyway, since I'm discussing this in the street, let's go find some place quiet. I'm up for just going there now. Going to check it out at least. I agree with Creed. I feel like it's less suspicious if we're just in the neighborhood during the day. Aye. Maybe we came to visit our auntie. <laughs> <laughs> Why the fuck? Okay. Because <laughs> I miss her. No, not that. <laughs> no, I'm saying that because your tokens like they don't if I whatever I put your tokens in a new place the HP bar goes away and I have to go look up how what your HP is but, but for some reason when I took the freaking golem over there it was fine <laughs> <laughs> oh it's probably because golem's technically an NP it's not a player hey okay yeah. what if it's something the player needs to change and then it will be <laughs> defaulted on Oh. I mean, maybe. I don't know. Because otherwise, I'm just going to have to keep pulling up everyone's character sheet every time. Because they'll be like, hey, good, with your HP. Oh, we had which, a long rest. <laughs> which I can't even look at your effing character sheets. Hmm. I can't. I can't. Like, I, click, I click edit, it does nothing. Hmm, weird. Oh, here it is. Here's a. I have to do it a different, stupid way. Because this stream is brought to you by Roll Twenty. <laughs> nice. Or you have to manually. I'm a little edit surprised your... it took us that long to make the joke. Or you have to, <laughs> uh, well. Or you have to manually edit your character, your player's tokens, every effing time you want to have them be on a map because it can't just remember that you know, what the character's HP is, much less that you want them to be able to see what their own HP is. Got it. You just got to mm. make a map that spans the entirety of an actual world. 
Oh, let's see. That would be a nightmare. All right, so I'm going to assume that every, whatever everyone has on their character sheets is their HP maximum because we long rested. Okay, good, great. <laughs> oh, that's a weird. Okay. Yeah, have we even been in combat since we leveled up? Yes. No. No. Yeah, no. No. You leveled up right before the fight with the pirates. Yeah. Did we? Yeah. Yeah, because I had my spirit weapon. Oh. For some reason, I think it was after. Okay. Yeah. So thanks for all twenty for completely like killing all the inertia and. <laughs> you know, it's all good. Having me here because I don't know what the hell else I'm supposed to talk about because I was expecting it just to work how I expected. <laughs> so, you know, the cats are out of the bag <laughs> that I'm putting them on a map for something, and why else would I be doing that? <laughs> cat, you could have made a map for the town. I don't know. Damn, that's a valid point. So how big is this town map? Is it like oblivion size where you have the God, how many sections was this? You had the arena area. Oh, there's the a lot. main market. I mean, look, I've got a world map and then <laughs> from there I I kind of I just kind of bullshit as I go, okay? <laughs> but we're saying. on Water Street southwest of the crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you take a right at 4th and Main. <laughs> Get to the crack house. <laughs> uh, this used to be such a good neighborhood, but then the <laughs> drugs ruined it. <laughs> I play. Are, are there any uh, pairs of shoes thrown over a lamppost? There, <laughs> there are, in fact. Oh no! <laughs> All right. That's so, are you guys waiting till nightfall? Are you gonna try to like? I think we were just going to, like, happen to be in the area, is what we were saying. Yeah. And just kind of, like, you know, walking by as, like, if no other reason than just sco more scoping it out. Being inconspicuous. Ooh. Inconspicuous, that's the word I'm looking for. All right. So, you head up, and you're going through the mangrove swamp, and... You come up to a place where there is a log stretched across the water. And, you know, that's the only thing resembling a bridge that you see. <laughs> uh, everyone make a perception check. I'll take a 10. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. So Creed and Gideon, you, you are um, a wash in the natural beauty uh, of where you are. Um, do you notice some sea life in the water below? Hi, cats and Kilbin. You notice amongst that the the saltwater reef life down there that there are some reef sharks also swimming about. Cool. And again, this uh, this log appears to be the only way across. How wide is it? It doesn't look like we're going to be able to walk in inconspicuously. Not super <laughs> wide. Uh, to walk across, I mean, the uh, the gap is also not super huge. The gap where the log is over is, let's see, 15 
your feet. What was that? The the log is across a channel that is ten, maybe fifteen feet wide. Hmm. I point out the sharks and how narrow the bridge is. I uh, playing with sharks doesn't seem like a fun time. Well, it will definitely see us coming. Hmm. Yeah, after you cross this channel, you have to walk a little bit further, not too much, and then that's where it's located. I mean, it's a little bit out of the way on purpose, you know? So I can't have it in the middle of town. That makes sense. I mean, the log certainly is sturdy enough that you could use it to cross. Well, I don't think we're going to be very inconspicuous walking across this. I think we kind of seals out a purpose of what we're doing if we cross. You also don't uh, see anyone else around right now. Like, this is more of a, 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 na a, like a more natural kind of area. You don't see any other people. No. Oh. Uh, come on, let's just go explore. Nobody's around anyway. Sorry, one more time. How long did how far across did you say this gap is? Ten to fifteen feet. Ten to fifteen, okay. One second, you gotta step away. <laughs> Well, I mean, to be fairly honest, I think I'm kind of drawing a lot of attention with the golem around anyway. Fair I think to I'm, say. Yeah, I feel like he's not subtle. Yeah, and I assume he has, like, a negative stealth. <laughs> it's, that's like, he sure. rolls stealth with, with, like, double disadvantage. Surprisingly, no, because he can put on heavy armor, and it does specify that he gets dis normal di heavy armor stuff, so... He actually has a... What is stealth? He actually has a plus one to stealth. <laughs> because he has a plus one dex. <laughs> Better than me. Yeah, I suppose. I guess to be fair, because like realistically, you can make these to be stealthy golems. Yeah, I can put I, I can put heavy armor, which I actually tend to do, is to give him like heavy armor and such at some point. And I'm back. Hey, okay. welcome back. <clears throat> yeah, the way I plan on going with this guy is he's essentially going to become one hell of a tank. Great. All right. So you guys cross in the log, or what? You, or what you doing? If you already came out here, let's let's go ahead. What's sense and not doing it now. All right, everybody make athletics or acrobatics if you have them. If not, just do uh, regular old decks. Is... You said athletics or acrobatics? Or regular flat decks if you don't have either. Oof. <laughs> oh, good. I can use as Azusa athletics. Oh, hold on one sec. Actually, I think. The golem has. Yeah, my golem actually has pers actually proficient athletics because it's high enough. Or, yeah. Or deck, sorry, I think. Don't forget about the dogs, too. Is Would it be all good if I rode my golem across? You can ride your golem, and I'm gonna just hand wave the dogs for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Eleven. All right, Kai show, shows off and just kind of jumps <laughs> completely over the log, doesn't even touch it. There's a little flip uh, in there. Yeah, exactly. 
and you stick the landing. Cats, <laughs> uh, uh, I I'm not sure how he does this with heavy armor and his dog, but <laughs> his his dog just just rear just puts its butt up in the air and wiggles it a little bit with a look of doggy determination and jumps and lands halfway across the log and then jumps to the other end. I thought you were going to say he kicks flips the dog. No. <laughs> <laughs> Gideon lands in the water. Kilbin slips but catches himself. And Creed on the golem, it's a little touch and go, Hooray. but you make it. You are really good to think about giving you some kind of climbing equipment. <laughs> so does anyone want to... How far down is it? Well, about five oh. feet, maybe. But there's sharks. Well, I'm dead. Yeah, I try to pull Gideon out of the water. I'll help. Yeah. Okay. I'll... If nothing, I'll send the golem in, and if it, any sharks get too close, he'll, he'll attack them. Okay, well, since you've got help on it, uh, roll with advantage. Oh, athletic me climbing out of the water before I die? <laughs> yeah, athletic, whoever's helping you out, uh, they can have athletics or strength, whichever, and roll with advantage because, you know, everyone's helping out. Oh, God. If I roll high enough, do we just throw him out of the water? Jesus Christ. Okay. Yeah, between yeah. all between all that you 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 easily lift this wet cat of a sorcerer out of the water. <laughs> It'd be great if you know I could roll anything above a 10. <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I'd take a 10 at this point. I am not doing great with the dice. <laughs> and now that you're all out of the water, from behind you, you hear an unsettling but familiar gurgling screech. Oh, great. And in common, one of your old friends manages to choke out, Give us Pearl! Oh, boy. Is it actually turning around and looking to see who it is? Is it actually the our old friends who just seem to be not quite right right now? I think he was more being facetious, and it's the oh, Sargon again. Gotcha. I wasn't sure. Okay, that's where I wasn't sure. Okay. I don't think he means literally our friends, our old they... pirate no. crew. No, okay. no, no, I, no. I thought he literally meant Sahog Man. Yeah, that's, no. what, that's what I thought, Sahag too. Man's still good. Like, like that okay. he was... I been, I'm sorry like that I was wasn't impacted by the pearl. I'm sorry that I wasn't sarcastic, okay? <laughs> yeah, we need to really get that inflection right. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I got your sarcasm, okay? <laughs> so did I. <laughs> All right, so here you are. You, if you look on roll 20, that's where you are. Uh, so what you do... Are we rolling for initiative? That I was giving you guys a chance to see if you wanted to do something else first, but if not, we can skip straight to that. Hi. Just I think to be they smart want the pearl. You want to see if you can give it to them? I'm just going to like, what pearl? <laughs> you mean the one that we left at the island? No, that one. What Point. one? And she. So at this point, the the Sahagan priestess is now out of the water, and they are, you know, approaching that one. And she points at Kai. As I'm doing this, can I use this as like a cover to cast? Oh, hold on, where is it? Uh, what spell? Give it. All it. Give back. Yeah, as or a die. under a whatchamacallit, under the guise of this 
feigning ignorance. Uh, can I cast Seeking Projectile on my on my crossbow before drawing it? Um, deception. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> I am not a charismatic person. Uh, I don't think any of us are really that charismatic. Oh, thank God. <laughs> you, she, all right. You, uh, you managed to stealthily... Uh, make, well, actually, quick question. What are the... Is it like verbal components or... Well, whatever it is. You do it and manage to do it uh, stealthily enough that they don't take notice. It's a verbal semantic... Yeah, I'd just be like using the inflection of like what I'm saying, just kind of slurring the words a little bit. Nice. Sounds like broken English almost. <laughs> As I'm just like twiddling with an arrow, then I just like click it into place. They they look at you like, what the hell is wrong with this guy? But they they buy it. Um. <laughs> uh, can I try to think really hard and try to turn the leader Sahag person and in back into like human form? You can. Certainly try. I'm gonna try that. You can tr you, you can try anything. <laughs> Here comes the nat one that makes things complicated, or the nat twenty that makes things complicated. <laughs> like I did previously to turn somebody back into he their original form, I'm going to try to turn the leader, sorcerer, wizard guy. Priestess. Priestess, that's the word. Oh. Okay. Back into human form and not Sahag form. What What would you like me to roll? I believe last time that was wisdom. Um, like a medicine or just... Well, I mean, you're not like... I mean... in general? Eh... Or Arcana, I mean, you're, it's like a magical kind of psychic sort of thing you're doing. You're using, like, mind bullets. I'll just do regular wisdom because I don't, I'm not very good at Arcana. Go for it. <laughs> Roll a persuasion. For hey. The back. hey, there you go. Uh, okay. Well, the Sahagan priestess screams bloody murder and falls to her knees and is grasping her head, but does not appear to be changing back. Uh, oh, oops, I tried clicking on the wrong person. Hello. I'm just gonna kind of like take a couple steps back, kind of get more next to my golem. Okay, anyone else, real quick? I will hop off my dog and take a battle ready stance. I'm gonna try to shake my cloak dry, and if it billows, can it make like a little air, just like a. <laughs> Yeah, if the if the golem can actually, yeah, if the golem just slowly inches forward just a little bit, I'll basically put a little something, put the golem between myself and the co group. Yeah, you, you, the the cloak billows itself uh, to the point of being just slightly damp. <laughs> Since uh, these Sahagin are obviously going to attack us now that their priestess is screaming in pain. I mean, they're going to assume that was an attack. Uh, can I take this opportunity to run the hell over there and slash at the priestess? Uh, yeah, I mean, she's... Yeah, you can try. Go for it. Yep, yeah. He's kicking it off. And uh, <laughs> do I get an advantage because she's down on the floor screaming in pain? I was going to say, yeah, I treat it as a surprise attack. Mm 
Nice, dirty 20. Well, let's see. Her AC is only 12. <laughs> so that definitely hits. Yeah, let me get in there. And you do 11 damage. And then, since this is a priestess and I know what they can do because of what they did to me, I'm going to use a superiority die to add 1d8. Hey, I didn't get a 1 this time. There you go. All right, well, that snaps her out of her... Um, that snaps her out of it immediately. And she grasps a, something around her neck and utters something in Sahagin, and that seems to alleviate all of her pain. So she did something magical effectively to block the effects. Um, I, but yeah, now let's roll for initiative. I was like, would it be anything I might have an idea of? Yeah, actually, <laughs> the initiative thing first. Okay. Uh... Let me give everyone a turn. Oh, wait. Everyone just popped in. Yeah, everyone go ahead and... Right, everyone's there. I just need to add the Sahag, as it looks like. I was going to say, uh, would I have any idea with my knowledge of magical and mechanical uh, what she might have done? Especially if it was a magic item she had? Um, well. It's just like a symbol of faith. Okay. Oh, I forgot okay. to click myself there. But yeah, I rolled a one. <laughs> We're rolling great on initiative, guys. Well, I haven't rolled for them yet, so... Uh, initiative. Da, 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 da. No, I don't have a great initiative. Uh... But can I? Eh, not awful. I get distracted petting the dog. <laughs> Puppy. <laughs> Okay, let me get these guys out of here since they're not in the combat anymore. All right, and then let's just roll for them. All right, is everyone? Let me make sure you guys' initiatives are in there correctly first. Mine's not because I forgot to click my token. Sorry. It's okay. I'm having to fix everyone manually, so I don't feel bad. I try to wipe the slobber off on my chain mail inside. Okay. There we are. Creed, why are you in here twice? Let's get you out of here. Get rid of the extra Creed. We have an excess of Creeds and an excess of Kilbin. So I guess you guys did roll properly and I just didn't freaking see it. Or mostly. Okay, I think we're sorted out now. All right. <laughs> I only see Creed and Gideon and the Sahagans now. Yeah. You might have to roll down. Yeah, no, no, same. It's... Yeah, there's a yeah. lot. Yeah, I only see uh I only see them too and I got the whole thing up right now. Yeah, yeah just... scrolling down I'm not seeing Kilbin or the, yeah. anyone. I or see those. I see him. I don't know why you guys don't. If it, if anything, you can just call out who's coming up, who's next, and yeah, who's I'll, on deck, who's, yeah, up, who's on deck. Yeah, yeah, this stream brought to you by Roll20. Okay, so Creed. <laughs> Creed, oh, you first. Holy shit. Okay. 
Yeah, Korean they, immediately they having. Oh, go ahead. There's your you, and then a whole lot of Sahag. Fair enough. Yeah, Creed will uh, immediately after seeing him run up be like, "Oh gosh, fuck! I guess we're doing this." Uh, and he's gonna draw the he's gonna pull up the crossbow and he's gonna fire at the priestess, which is this first one, correct? Yep, the one that's yeah, already taking some damage. Yep, he's going to see that. And be like, "Well, let's see, have a little extra punch for this one." And that will be a. Oops, they have it open because of fancy schmancy thing. I get an extra plus five to Uh did that add my So ooh, ouch. Well it hits at least. <laughs> her, her AC is uh <laughs> what did you get? Her AC is twelve. I got a twelve. Spot on. Alright. You hit three three damage? Uh, I think so. Let me double check that. I'm very confused by what you rolled. I see a d20 that rolled a three, and I see three tens, which show an eight, an eight, and a one. Yeah, I'm mildly confused with that one. Uh, so it's normally a plus two, or no, it's normally a plus four to hit. And then... Well, so it added your... Do you, you have an ability that lets you add int to your attack rules, don't you? Yeah, sure. So it should be like a plus... Five. Yeah. Oh, I see. It just switched to a plus five, I think. Okay, yeah. So, just so switched your to... plus four comes from your dex and your proficiency, and the plus five is from your int. Okay. And you got a three oh. on your d20. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, and then does that spell actually do anything if not... Over 20 or no? Uh... Ooh, ouch. Nope, it doesn't. Okay, so yeah, that just hits and. Yeah. That does so... three points of damage. Okay. Eesh. Damn, I rolled like as low as I probably could. Damn close. Yeah, oof. That's rough. Alright, anyways, yeah, then the. Bonus action. I, I mean, know. things worked out in the end. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Bonus action. I'm gonna have my golem move up here to help Kilbin out. It's a wise move. Okay. Yeah. Uh, at your turn, Creed. That'll do it. Plug up the All line right. a little bit. <laughs> All right. So it's the this Sahagan in the back's turn. What do I want him to do? Dur, dur, dur. Uh, well, he is uh, at range from the golem. He can use his spear to poke the golem because it's a 10 to reach on it. Yep. No, the one in the back? Oh, shit. No, sorry. Fuck. You're good. <laughs> Thank I mean, you. he can move into range real easy. I mean, that's true. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, he will... go over here so that he can poke the golem and also cowardly jump into the ocean if needed. Fair enough. No, not minus three. I mean, if you want to give him a minus three. Oaks, <laughs> Oaks at the golem and four hits. Oh, yeah. I assume a 20 hits. Yep, that is. Okay. All right, and he's two hand in it, so that's going to be a D8. Okay. Plus one. Ooh, ouch. Oaks for nine. Damn. One heck of a hefty hit on that one. That gets it right in the robot. All right. This oh, guy is next. This guy is going to scooch down a bit so he can poke Kilbin. Does a 20 hit you, Kilbin? <laughs> Damn it. I wish I could roll like that. 
I think that has a yes. For three piercing, so minus three minus your deal. So he did zero. <laughs> nice. Do you wanna do you wanna like in make a Scrabble. side comment or something? <laughs> Do you want to talk shit to the Sahagin who hit you? I, I just, I, I just, I just, I just shake my head at him. Yeah, because he looks like he was real excited, and then he's just kind of like, ah, oh, piss. <laughs> Got a solid hit, and just armor stopped. Hey. <laughs> right. Oh shit, I removed him from combat by accident. Fucking A. Hold on. Add turn. Let's go. Okay. That's fine. This is fine. You say that. But is it? it? <laughs> Alright, it is. Poking the golem. No, not the damage first, damn it. <laughs> well, he. Because he got a nat one, he actually breaks his spear. <laughs> it just hits the golden snaps. He's going to back up a bit because of that. Sounds like whirring grinding as it jams into like the golem slag and just shreds the spear. Pretty much. All right, so now it's this fella's turn. The guy who was not deleted. Are they starting to demoralize? I a mean, little the bit. one broke his bit. spear and the one you know just pinged his pinged my armor and did nothing yeah a little bit a little bit does a 12 hit the golem does not Ping, does, so yep glances off the armor oh, yeah. sorry I forgot to modify the health on that Gian. Let's see. I'm thinking it might be time for another fireball. Or fire orb, whatever. It's a very different spell. Yeah, I, I know. Um, yeah, I'm going to... Flaming Sphere, that's the one I was talking about. Yeah. I'm going to cast Flaming Sphere. Use a fireball. I will drop it. That in the water. We'll drop it. Let's see, is that 30 feet? Um, you can take your move first if you want to. Yeah. Well, I like being not new combat. Combat scares me. Um. <clears throat> It? Oh, okay. Range is 60 feet. I was about to say, how long was it? 30 or 60? Yeah, I'm going to drop it right here, which you know, uh, just... Okay. Real quick, Komodo. I don't have oh. control over my golems. You don't have control over... What the fuck? Yeah, I like guess not letting me change his modify his health bars or anything. Uh, why? Why? I also can't. I can't edit it. I don't know what happened. It's like I've lost. I've lost control of your golem. No worries. Let me see if I can. Let me see if I can do anything about it. Uh, like maybe, maybe when, um, maybe when Gideon was in there fixing it, it changed the permissions or something. I don't know. Mm. Oh, no let's pull it up. Um. But yeah, everyone within five feet of that needs to make a DC 15 dex check. Okay. That circle... Okay, well, so none, of, so we're none of them have a dex modifier, so... Yeah, no, it's I've a, still seen your uh, dice rolls. I'm not confident yet. Well, it's better than you rolling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, seriously. Yeah. So, so if they don't, if they save, what happens? I think it's half. Uh, save is half damage, and damage is God damn it. It's eight. It's eight. Okay. Uh, 
Isn't I'm it gonna... eight plus your spell modifier? No, wizards and stuff don't actually get to add the spell modifier to much. Oh yeah, so two d six, which it already rolled as yeah eight. So four damage for the two that passed, eight for the one unlucky guy. Yeah, yeah. So Can you imagine were... rolling seventeen. So I've been doing. Since it was I've directly been behind using this her. spell wrong in my other game. Since it was directly behind her, the priestess is the one who failed to save. Mm-hmm. And that will end my turn. All right. Killer of Bins. Okay. Oh, hell yeah. Because now I have a full round to do stuff in instead of just a surprise round. Yeah, buddy. Show it to who's boss. And I have advantage because of the golem. Uh, correct. If we're still doing it that way. Okay, so what can't you do with your golem? What can't I do? Yeah. What do you mean? So can you move him? Oh, I can move him as a bonus action for right now, but for him to take an attack takes my action. Mechanically, oh. what is the problem with your token? He can't change the HP. Oh, oh, I can't change HP bars. Okay. Yeah, like I can go in, like I can go into the setting thing on it, and I can type stuff in, but it doesn't change anything. All right, all right. So I assume you're swinging on the priestess. Yep. <laughs> All right, so I did her? 10 damage. Is she still up? Uh, barely. Can you not see their HP? Nope. nope. We cannot. It's all good. Nope. But uh, I use my, what's that called? Action Surge to uh, attack again. Okay. Well, she's got five left. Can you see it now? Yep. Uh, yep. Oh, nice. Yeah, I cut her in two. Oh, we lost someone. It was Cat. Oh, it was the DM? No, it was Killbit. Oh, it was DM. Oh, it, was, it was the I, DM this time. My Discord glitched for a second. Holy uh, crap. It's still recording. Oh, weird. All right. Uh, yeah. This. yeah, she did. Okay, so your goal is 21 out of yeah, 32 I, I cut, HP. Yeah, I cut her in two. Correct. And when you click on the little um, gear icon, or when you left click him, you can't change it? Uh, I wasn't able to. I can try now. Nope. Yeah, it still doesn't let me change it. Hmm. All right. Well, so just tell me what it's supposed to be, and I'll see if I can change it. Uh, 21 of 32. All right, so that's correct. I don't know what, this, what the second bar is, the blue one. The second one was because we had temporary hit points from oh, something uh, right. you did, so I added that one. Eight. All right, sounds good. Eight, okay. yeah. Anything else for you, Kilbin? Movement? Mm, no. Okay. Kai. Hey, Kai. Going to uh, run up to this one. And uh, All right. I'll attack it. That's my short sword. AC is 12. Oh, I missed Ooh. that one. Um, but... Uh, make an unarmed strike as a bonus action, so you attacked on my action. So okay. I will roll that one. You got a 20 on that nice. one. Nice. Do how much damage? Two? Two damage. Okay. Don't forget Flurry of Blows if... I know you were forgetting that one for a little bit. No, that's, uh, if I want to spend key points, I can do that. Oh, 
that, oh, that okay. bonus gotcha. action attack is uh one I get to do that I that I have been forgetting. Nice, uh, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, anything else, Kai? Uh, no, that's it. Okay. Elgato's. Okay, I will run forward and cast blindness on the one in the back in hopes to prevent its escape. Hmm. Vicious. <laughs> Interesting. Which means it needs to take a constitution throw. Con save? Okay. What's it got? Ooh. Twelve. <laughs> so if it passes, is it completely negated or? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Anyway, um, then I'll use my bonus action to cast spiritual weapon. Um, okay. if those are two spells, I then I cannot. For it currently. I don't oh, think you, you yep. cast a spell and you a cantrip on the same turn, but you can't cast two spells. On oh, the I see. Okay, then that concludes my turn. Okay, Creed. Right, Golem. Can help the one out a little bit. And I'm going to. He's going to charge for it, knowing, knowing this time that to avoid the giant fiery death ball. Uh, he's going to go over to here. And he's going to attack this one in the center, actually. Go for it. He's. Uh, where is... There it is. Yeah, it's going to take... Bad phone. I gotta turn that down. This one would not be with advantage, then. No. Okay, got it. Just double checking. Damn! Swing and a miss. Nope, he take, goes to take a chop and just completely misses. <laughs> hmm. Alright, anything uh, else for you, Creed? No, I think... I'll, well... Yeah, I'll just take my movement to get a little bit better of sight lines on these guys, but they're not. Nope. All right. <laughs> All right, and then uh, on their turn, they have to make another. Uh, what was East? What was it? X uh, uh, fifteen. Dex. Is it beginning or end of their turn? End of their turn. So if they move away. Ah. Okay. Let's see. All right. Well, he is going to cheese it. Just jumps in the water and starts swimming off. Uh, where is this other one? There's one that's in the initiative order that doesn't. Oh, is it the one that died? No. Oh, oh, I think I know what happened. I think I know what happened. Okay. <laughs> His spear got chewed up and he ran away. I did them out of order, I think, is the problem. Okay, the one that was near Kai was supposed to go. But, you know, same difference. This one's going to disengage, use its action to disengage. And commence cheesing it. Fair enough. Okay, this guy that's engaged with the golem. <laughs> same, same thing. Disengage. And, and cheese it. Last one is going to do the same thing. Fair enough. 
Okay. All right. Do you guys want to pursue them or do you want to just let them flee? Uh, I can just let them flee. Well, we drop. We drop the. Uh, <laughs> we drop the priestess. So it's. Thing. And then. Creed will. Creed will just take a pot shot at one of the ones over here, just for shits and giggles. If nobody else has any objection. To me, going a little out of turn. Get him. Yeah, I'll mm. just take a pot. I'll just take a pot shot at this first one right here. Sure. It's because they attacked us and think that they're just going to run. Creed's a little annoyed with these idiots. They've already delayed his his uh, unveiling long enough. You know what? I could use an acid splash against the two over on this side of the next to each other. <laughs> oh, I didn't have enough movement to get them. I've also well, I can't take got a long down. bow. Oh, jeez. I am not hitting nothing today. Gideon's I can also have the fireball chase things. Or the fire <laughs> orb. Alright, the crossbow bolt uh, get, is a near miss. It's enough for it to see it and know that it's still under attack. Uh, the two up top, I didn't have... Without just taking them off the map, they... I couldn't... Yeah, they had enough movement to get past that far, so they're not really there. Uh, it's a range of 60 feet. 60 yeah. feet? For the acid yeah. splash? Does it go into uh, the water? Does it splash underwater? I mean, it doesn't say it doesn't. I would say it does, and then just disperses quickly, so it do enough to do the damage and then disperses in the water without causing any other further issues. Sure, go for it. it it's a... X saving throw. Okay. So for them, that's a flat 20. Why oh. this save these? What do they have to roll to save? How much do they got to get? For some reason, it did not. It took out my spell save DC. Um. Give me a second because I don't. My sheet didn't save it. Hmm. Weird. Yeah. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head. Hey, just because I. No, can I actually. Yeah, just because I cast it and I forgot to put it up there. I'll put that there just so people. Can if they wanted to. Okay. Yeah, that was a bit ago. Yeah, no problem. I mean, my, my philosophy is, is de cheating in D&D &D just makes it less fun, so if you were, that just hurts you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a firm believer that cheat codes in any games tend to make the game less fun. So, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure you noticed, but I shot an arrow at them as well, and yeah, which, I'm pretty sure it did. Which ones, though? Which one? Uh, the one on the left. This one. This one, or when you say the left, what do you mean? That one? Okay. Uh, I mean, you... Yeah, the ones in the water that were... I mean, you get an arrow in its butt as it goes... As it continues to go. <laughs> uh, I'll move the fireball here so this guy... Uh, ram it into him so he has to make the dexterity save again. <laughs> Guys, we're out of out of initiative for <laughs> Does it work underwater also? Technically it's on land, so it's boiling the water in him, but it's two ones because roll twenty actually <laughs> oh, hates God. me. Like <laughs> I'm glad it's not just yeah, I for, uh, oh man, I I feel like I, I feel your pain right now. Alright. Are you guys, this is you guys I'm doing spells where I don't have to roll. It's Komodo who rolls, and then he still gets 18s and 20s. <laughs> All right, you guys, you guys get your pot shots in, and they they swim off. Yeah, I'm going to uh, billow my cloak and say, "Don't come back." <laughs> Thoroughly demoralized and intimidated, and there's the odds of them bothering you again are practically none. Yeah, Creedle. Creed will take a look towards his uh, 
towards the bisected uh, priestess and see if grab the or see about the necklace that she was holding. I mean, it's it's like a, a cartoon fish skeleton on a string. Oh, yeah. So so so, so I, no magic property. It's just something she was praying to. Is it? It lit. Yeah, literally just a like a. A, a faith spell focus. That's it. Yeah, I'll that, just kind of pop it off her neck and kind of give a good hard yank and pocket it. <laughs> hey, man, grave robbing? Me. I thought you uh, were better than that. So you're <laughs> yanking it over the dead Sahagan priestess. Yep. Uh, uh, it's, it's, think you, of it as you a... want uh, if you want a fishbone necklace. <laughs> it's not necessarily for me. It's uh, let's see what we can do with it. I didn't think you as the trophy taking type, but okay. It's not so yeah, much it's a more of a kill Ben thing. It's not a trophy. It's an idea he has. He he realizes that these are recurring characters. <laughs> What's a character? I feel like that's a little uh, Deadpoolish. I realize that, but I didn't say that. <laughs> no, you know what I mean. The recurring uh, enemies. This isn't the first time we. Uh, was it meeting him twice as or, yes, meeting him twice as coincidence, three times as planned. Well, uh, yeah, they are. Go ahead. Also, you know, I don't know where I got that acid splash from. Is I thought it was from that. It's a class of uh, it's a race ability. Race ability from Genasi. Yeah. Being a Genasi. But they changed it. It used to be shape water or something. Oh. Okay. All I'm seeing is shape water and I'm just like, what the heck? It must be looking at the old version. See. Somehow. Brought to you by Roll Twenty. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so so you guys continue through the mangrove swamp. Not much further ahead, you see what looks like a fairly run-down in the location that you were given. Right, and they're wondering why there are people getting poisoned. This isn't a crack house, it's a crack home. <laughs> what the... Why are you whining? Because you made a crack home joke. <laughs> Hey, look, just because she's a crackhead don't mean nothing. <laughs> All right, so what y'all want to do? Uh, yeah, I mean, for the most part, yeah, just grabbing the necklace because that's, that's an interesting idea for later plans. Can we take a short rest and heal everybody up? I guess the question is, would Creed recognize anything, like any kind of like iconography from this necklace, like related to the, to the uh, what should we call it, like whatever god might be associated with this necklace? I mean, whatever god the the Sahagin worship, maybe. But I mean, it literally looks like if you go to an old like Heathcliff cartoon and they pull a cartoon fish skeleton out of the trash, it's that's literally what it looks like. With, okay. with a with a string going through the eye holes to to hold it <laughs> in, like the shape, so it can be a necklace. Hmm. Interesting. Indeed. Well, that was interesting, but that's not why we came here. You guys want to continue? Aye. Guy, are these guys going to be continue being... Do you think these guys are going to continue being a problem? Because of... What? Are these guys... Do you think these guys are just going to keep coming after us because of that pearl? Or I think we'll be fine once we get to the mainland. We'd probably be fine once we get to the mainland. Honestly, they're, they're not that tough. They run away super easily. <laughs> Like I, I don't need any healing from that at all. From that fight at all. To be fair, can you blame them? <laughs> all right, so you're standing outside of the shack. Uh. 
Well, we're this far. We're not going to be inconspicuous, do we, Knock? Do we see anyone around now that we're in a, a clearing near the shack? No, you don't. Uh, it just appears to be a shack. Hmm. I'll knock on the door. Uh, when you knock on the door, it's it, it just kind of swings open slightly. Oh, nice. Well, that's ominous. <laughs> well, what's inside? Uh, inside, there are some steps leading down. And then a far more sturdy and substantial door that appears to be made of stone. Uh, the, the corridor is 10 feet wide, so it's just enough for the golem to snugly fit in. Suck it in, big guy. You'll be fine. I will knock on this door as well. On the stone door? Eh. In is there a so... handle or anything? No. There is there is not there is not, but uh there is one of those little I, I don't know you do you see Who Frame Roger Rabbit or like old like noir movies where they go to a speakeasy and like there's that little slide thing on the door? Oh yep. Yeah. Alright, so there's one of those. It slides to the side, and a pair of eyes look at you, and they say, Pat, what's the password? Wondertainment. <laughs> <laughs> New England clam chowder. <laughs> Roll, I don't know, shit. Cats? Uh, I wish we had luck as a stat. I feel like deception's appropriate. Or persuasion. Shenanigans. Yeah. Either yeah. one. Uh, they don't... They think that you think that's the password. <laughs> and they slide the eye hole shut again. I mean... Is there, like, a lock on this side of the thing? Or any kind of, like... Anything that would like potentially be able to unlatch it from this side? Uh, Doorknobs, anything? Do investigation. Sure. I'm actually fairly good at that. 23. Uh, you do notice um, it's going to be that it's, it's pretty well concealed, but you do see. On the side of the wall, a panel that slide you could slide loose, and behind it would be um, essentially a manual, like emergency manual override to open the door. Let's go. Uh, I'll go over to it and uh, just like kind of stand by it for a second and look at it a little bit. So, uh, how badly do we want in there? Go for it. I don't know the password. Uh, I, I'm assuming if we use this, they're not going to be too friendly about it. I don't think they would be too friendly anyway. I mean, is our plan to just go in there and bust some heads? Yeah, fair enough. I'll go ahead and see if I can work some magic with this panel. Open it up. Pop the pop the override. All right, roll uh, something Thanks. appropriate. Thieves tools? Sure. I'm going to grab a drink of water while you're doing that. Uh, one sec. Oh, I haven't modified my proficient or typed in my proficiency with that. That's Dex and uh, usually it's Dex and uh, proficiency. So that would be a four. So plus four.
All right, sorry about that. Oh, shit, that's not what I... Oh, boy. Hold on. Okay. That's better. Sorry, so you... I, almost, I almost gave myself an uh, expertise in it. Hold on. Uh, natural 20! <laughs> <laughs> For a total of 24. Uh, yeah, you, you just kind of pump, bump the panel with your elbow, like, uh, the fawns and it just kind of slides <laughs> open and there, and you get to the override without any problem. Yeah. Just grab the switch and just like flip it down. If that's all it is. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Excuse and me, gentlemen. The stone doors slide open. And on. Inside, you see a bunch of guys just kind of sitting around, drinking, playing cards, and they all stop, and they all turn and look at you. Greetings. Anyways, where are the health inspectors? Right. Sure you are. Oh. Roll deception. <laughs> I'm going to go up to the guys playing cards. <laughs> An eight. <laughs> they don't buy it at all. Bring off the guys playing cards. And, uh, hey, what you guys playing? Uh, we're playing Pazak, but that's none of your business. I think maybe you, uh, Took a wrong turn and maybe uh, looked a little somewhere you shouldn't have. Tell you what, what? actually, we're so hostile. We just thought this is the place for the good time. Uh, tell you what, deal me in. If I lose, I'll leave. If I win, let us stay. Did you just say if you lose? We let you stay. And if oh, you win, we if let I you lose. stay. <laughs> Heads I win, tails you lose. <laughs> if I lose. Uh, I'll leave. We'll leave. Uh, but if I win, let us stay. They all kind of look at each other and they're like, well, it's been a boring night anyway. Go ahead. Current bet's 10 gold. And I put 10 gold on the table. All right. Uh, let's see. What would we use for that? That's just uh, opposed rolls, I guess. Um, I do. Rollies. Is that a sleight of hand to cheat? I am yeah. proficient <laughs> in yeah. playing cards. Oh, you are? Yep. Okay. Add proficiency bonus to All right. <laughs> so, yeah, add your proficiency bonus and roll that, and they're going to, um, they're just going to flat this... roll. All right, well, over the it's very abbreviated because we just rolled for it, but over a course of hands and bets, you come out on top and you win the pot. Oh, so oh you God. end up They agree to let you, they you. they don't run you out. Oh, hold, you didn't get 20. Oh, that was a uh, Oh, no. I misread that. My bad. <laughs> you one guy lost, you tied with the I other, so now you're going to do the for next. my proficiency. God damn it. Okay, fine. You won. I'm trying to describe what happened. Everyone's like, no, they tied. I'm like, fuck. All right. So anyways, yes. What The thing I was saying before where eventually you do beat them and you win the pot and you get 100 gold. Well played. And they all seem a bit more relaxed. And they ask, uh, okay, so are you, uh, what are you here for? Well... You play a hand of cards, but I can't imagine you came all the way out here for that. Actually, well, when I said we were health inspectors, I uh, wasn't completely off base. <laughs> We've been heard people have been getting sick. Ah. Uh, right, right. Yeah, we don't know anything about that. We've been having a pleasant evening with y'all so far. 
Oh, it's nothing. Pay for that side. change. I agree. What I'm getting at is... What's the word I'm looking for? Bad for business. If you kill your clientele. Hmm. Don't want a bad... I, I'm just saying. If nothing else, I'm good at finding things that uh, don't belong where they should be. You have someone who's trying to sabotage your little operation here. Might be worth having someone look around. Uh, so, sounds like you want to have a word with management. Yeah, you one could say that. What is this place, anyway? What, what does it look like? <laughs> It's a crack home. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, realistic. It's a, it's a repurposed uh, ruin of some kind. Okay. <laughs> like, all right. Well, I'll tell you what. If we just let you, we like y'all. We really do. But if we just let you in, we're not doing our job. So. Uh, Hmm. How can we do this? How are we going to do this here? Because if we just look let you in, you know, they're not going to be too appreciative of that. Well, what if I said we were customers? Ah. Well, in that case, the cover charge is five gold ahead. Everyone good hmm. with this? I think we can do that. Hmm. Assuming everyone has five gold. Yep. Yep. I can help cover anyone who doesn't. Yeah, we all got five gold. Yeah, I still got 121. Mm. Yep. Yeah, I'll all pitch right. in the five gold. All right. You pay the cover charge. Let me get this working right here. Hold on. Let's see. Da, 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 da. Okay. As you head inside, around seated around the various circular tables, you see patrons who are making use of Azure via hookahs or whatever they, however mean you know, it, it's a hookah bar essentially for Azure, and they all look fairly tweaked out, pretty skinny, not in great shape. On the other side, once you go past the tables, there is a bar on the other side. If I, well, I want to let me do the circle thing. What the fuck? All right, there is a, let me do it. What the hell? Brought to you by Roll20. Anyway, so over on the absolute far side of the map, where this thing that looks like a bar, that's a bar. And... On the opposite side of the pillars, there is an yes, that thank you that I can't do for some reason. And directly across from that, there is another large stone door. Yes, right there. Right. Assuming the door has says something like uh man employees only or something. Yeah, essentially. Fair enough. Yeah, Creed would probably go to the bar and uh, did, at the like, just kind of like walking in. Does the bar have like uh, like just drinks, or does it strictly look like apparatuses for smoking, smoking or something? Uh, it's a regular bar. Okay. And in fact, the bartender seems to be the only one who isn't imbibing of anything. It's a, it's a rather tall, slender fellow wearing a wearing an apron, 
He's got got some glasses on. He looks pretty tired. He just asks, uh, what can I get you folks? What's your specialty? Uh, Azure and Ale. <laughs> I'll take the ale. Leave out the Azure. All right. One, one ale straight. That'll be one silver. No, flip it to him. Can I get the Azure and Ale to go? Uh, we don't normally do that. Normally, uh, we don't let, uh, we don't do to goes. This is quite the underground operation you got here for something that's legal. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So you understand, you know, it's purely for safety reasons why we can't let you uh, take the Azure out of the establishment. Understandable. Don't want people to act off their asses in the street. It's very true, very true. I feel like people are just going to drink real quick and then leave anyway, so, like... I can pay you yeah, extra you and take it to go if you want me to. What's no, really about it, sir? We'll, we'll make... just take a few and take them over to the booth over here. So, all right. So for the Azure itself, uh, let's see. There's five of you. Grand total for all together. That'll be fifty gold. And he pulls out a cartridge, like a cylinder, that it looks like it's intended to be fitted into the hookahs. It's fairly large. It's about the size of, uh, you know, like a a cylinder that you would get tennis balls in. Oh, geez. I'll, I'll go ahead and pay him the 50 for all of us and thank him, and, and we'll head over to a booth so we can examine it. All right. You want me to slot that in for you? He asks. Yeah. We'll handle it, thanks. I think I'll figure it out. Appreciate it. All right, and just let me know if you need anything else. Mm, will do. I'll follow Cats to whatever booth he wants to go to. Most in his blind spot. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'll just have... And, uh... Whoever's joining us, yeah, I'll have the... the I'll have the... That golem play an intimidation bouncer type. Don't fuck with this table type role. <laughs> I mean, well, he bartender... also can help block the view from the bartender. That too. It's I just mean... gonna be like standing there, basically taking a like a not so much defensive, but like a you know how a, like a bodyguard would roll would take. And you get the distinct impression because he's fairly tired that the bartender is a little bit overworked and not really paying very close attention. Like he Fair. said what he he said what he legally needed to say according to <laughs> policy, yada yada. Legally I'm not allowed to let you take alcohol out of the bar. <laughs> yep. Yep. More or less. Well, I'd immediately want to investigate it over here. So we'll try to examine it. All right. Hey. Can I? You guys got ten minutes. I might be able to potentially see more than just the stuff, or more than just the azure. And I can virtually, I can virtually cast uh, identify over the course of ten minutes. Uh, well, I can tell you straight away that the the azure does have a little bit of magic in it, but not much. Okay. I think... Uh, um, let me double check this. I think Identify will potentially re can reveal more, but I'm not sure. So are you doing Identify, or are you doing Detect Magic? Uh, I would go Identify if I was going to... Alright. Uh, you... Are you... Uh, 
yeah, it's magic item or magic imbued. You learn its properties, how to use them, whether it requires too many charges has it. Learn whether any spells are affecting the item and what they are. If the item was created by a spell, you learn which spell created it. If you said to without cast a spell, you learn what spells, if any, are currently affecting. Okay, so like if somebody's used magic to potentially tamper with this, I would know. Okay. All right. Uh, you you do your your ritual. You detect the slightest. It's very subtle, but you do detect a the the <laughs> tiniest whiff of transmutation magic on it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. No, let everyone know it. It seems like potentially there. Cutting costs by maybe filling it in, making it out of something else. Might not be combining properly. I don't advise we ingest this. You don't say. That's why we carry our own hooch, right, Kilvin? (laughs) (laughs) I was mostly talking to you, Gideon. I get through college. I know which drugs it's taking, which one's not. (laughs) Normally, I'd be all all, be all for taking a new drug, but I know this one will kill us. Yeah, it doesn't. You're definitely not going to feel good after. I'm assuming, anyway. Yeah. So, do you guys want to try to smuggle this out, or do you want to try to find out more while we're here? Is it? It's like a. You said it's like a metal cylinder. Uh, essentially, it's a. I mean, it's it's glass so that you can see inside to verify that you know the Azure is actually in there. Okay. But it does have uh, metal caps on either end, and it's intended to uh, slot into the into the hookah. Okay. Does there seem like there'd be a plausible way to like dump and open the caps, like maybe dump it into a bag or something? Uh, no. It's you. It would. It would definitely break the glass if you tried to tamper with it. Okay. But do you want to learn more about the supply? We don't. We already know yeah. this stuff's addictive and dangerous. Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Doesn't appear to be a very good way to open it. Maybe we should ask where they get see. it. So Ken, I don't think they'll be uh, very forthcoming with that answer, though. I'm with Gideon on that. Generally, these types of things are protected from prying eyes. Rival competition wish to do whatever is potentially going around now. Yep, that is precisely why it was given to you in, in that type of canister. Makes sense. So am I getting the sense that there was transmutation magic like as in the canister or from that? Uh, the canister is completely mundane. Okay. So so it does seem like it's been mildly tampered then. Yeah. Okay, got it. Just double checking. Uh, then yeah, I would... <laughs> well, do you think we'd possibly see if we can find a way to find the manager's notice about this? So do we see, like, again, an employee's only entrance back door get way again? Oh, yeah. right here. Yep. Okay. Well, do we want to start a distraction and uh, have someone sneak in, have some rowdy drunks maybe cause the scene? I have an interesting idea. You got a whole canister of azure here. There's a lot of twacked out people I bet would uh, happily fight for it. Start to whisper around. Maybe see if people, tell people whoever whoever comes to get it first gets it. I mean, I don't think there's too many people in a bar that solves it that aren't having it. I guess that's a good question. Like, does this place seem fairly well busy or is it actually... Or is it actually what? Is it, oh, sorry, kind of dead. I mean, yes and no. Like, uh, there's a seat, in, every every seat is filled, 
but uh, they're not particularly energetic. They're all fairly lethargic. Oh, gotcha. It's not like you know, yeah, being a, being a downer and all. They're not like you know. Yeah, I, that makes sense. Well, obviously, there's no way we're sneaking the golem into the back room. So I guess Creed and uh, either I, I uh, Creed and me can uh, make a scene. Yeah, it's going to involve smashing the, the, uh, the glass canister too. Mentally, I can control my golem, so I can. We can be separate if we. Or we could just knock on the door and see who's in there. Or we could just ask the bartender, see if they actually talk, relegate with any of their clientele. I would say talk to the bartender first before doing anything, like, too crazy, but... Another interesting idea. There's nothing to uh, lose by talking to them, but I don't think we'll gain much either, unfortunately. You know, just a thought, Mr. Noble Party Boy. <laughs> What if we played off your, what's the word for it, stature as nobleborn as you're trying to source a decent amount of this for a party you're throwing? We can try, but my name doesn't exactly spread too far here when I'm exactly in my father's kingdom. True, but you never You look know. like you're a noble, so... You look, you talk like a noble. <laughs> Put on the charm. It's... You do have the cape. You do have the cape. <laughs> um, it comes, okay. down, it comes down to it. You could just say the golem is your own hired. Fair enough. I'll go up to the bartender and ask how much for a cask for a party. Uh, cask. What are you? What, cask of what? What are you looking for exactly? The Azrael. We got real bored of all the usual stuff. This seems exotic enough to catch the attention of my friends. Ah, I see. Well, I'm not permitted to do that. But if you're looking to cut a special deal, I believe the manager is in, and he points to the door. On the opposite side. Door's unlocked. Okay. So I guess go through that door to talk to the manager. All right. I'll whisper good luck as he walks by again. I'll just, yeah, have the golem kind of just follow him around. I Kind of like as a bodyguard would basically say. Uh, as you go in, uh, roll perception. He looks friendly. I bet he's nice. <laughs> yeah, just as you go in, uh, roll perception. Yep, I am. Hey, I broke a 10. <laughs> Forced of the day. Holy <laughs> shit. Well, it's funny, you can go suck the biggest, fattest... Uh... <laughs> Brought to you by roll 20. <laughs> you probably shouldn't. You probably shouldn't say too much. It'll be the low... The... All right. <laughs> <For a month. laughs> I mean, the uh, you go into the office. It seems to have several decorative pieces and and books lying on, on in the, some tall bookshelves and things like that. And see a gentleman sitting behind his desk, pouring over some papers. He appears to be a rather scholarly fellow. And without looking up at you, he says, what can I do for you? Uh, your bartender told me uh, you can cut special deals for uh, selling by the cask for parties and the like. Hmm. He puts his paperwork down and looks at you. He's like, well, what did you have in mind? Oh, some of my college buddies are having a wedding and uh, bachelor parties coming up, and uh, they've all tried all the fancy ales and wines. This, though, this has some kick, and I think this could catch their interest. 
Interesting. Interesting. Roll persuasion. Well, at least I have a good stat, so hopefully roll 20 can't screw me too hard. <laughs> there you yeah. go. They tried. They're like, they oh, did. 13. It's like, I have a plus seven. You can go suck it. This is my <laughs> one good stat. <laughs> That could be the new strat. Just talk shit till it gives you something nice. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> Seven nat ones in a row. Negging the dice. <laughs> he said, the dice. So he Sorry. he seems he seems like he he's interested. So how much are we talking here? And is this something that you would need delivered regularly? Uh, remind me of the price of a uh, tankard. Uh, just a tankard? Yeah. Oh, well, the flask, whatever they gave us. 50, 50, 50? for fifty for the, the cylinder, which, I, you know, again, about the size of one of those cylinders tennis balls <laughs> come. <coughs> gotcha. Uh, judging by how much uh, single serving he charges, I'd say... We can go oh, f- 500 for a cask. And uh, this is a one, right now a one-time event, but all of these friends have money, and heck, who knows what they uh, they might want their own case to go home with. Hmm. He's considering it. You can tell he he. You can tell he wants to say yes, but something is holding him back. Uh, uh, who is the dwarven cousin that was getting married? And that's the whole way I was on that ship. Right. I, I, other than because he was a tiefling dwarf, we call him a dwarfling. I don't think we gave him a name. Oh, okay. Uh, the dwarfling prince of Hampshire, Hampshire is the one getting married. And again, there'll be a lot of other nobles at this party. This is a great uh, networking opportunity to get your concoction out there and in the bigger world. You're not going to let a little something like the rules stop you from uh, that, are you? I didn't really take this place for a rule-following organization. Well, he says, well, you know what? I like you, so I'm going to be candid with you. I don't know. Well, you have to understand. We all work for somebody. Everybody works for somebody. And I don't know if... uh, my boss would be interested in that or not, but I tell you what, make it a thousand gold worth, and I'll throw in some of these. And he, from his desk, he produces a vial of green liquid. Hmm, no said that doesn't look like the uh Azo concoction. Well, you see, if you're gonna be serving this at a a major function, I uh, especially with such high profile people, I should let you know that uh the boss man wanted us to include certain new additives and ingredients. And uh, while it does, uh, it is perfectly safe, of course. Some folks don't take to it. It hasn't quite been perfected. So this will alleviate those symptoms. I would hate for your uh, your dwarven prince to take a to have a, a pleasant experience, only to be soured the next morning. Mm. Sounds good. You mind if I have a sample? I already had a tankard, and I'd hate for my experience to be soured in the morning. Please have a sip. Okay, I guess uh, 
I'll take a small sip of the flask. Of whatever it is. It's, uh, it's kind of slimy, but it's fine. <laughs> Make a face. Ugh. Lemon I lime. need. You got anything to wash this down with? Uh, well, if you want to put that back down there, uh, you can always get your drink at the bar, especially if you're going to come through with that uh, thousand gold. Do you have that on you, by the way? I think I'd carry a thousand gold to a neighborhood like this. I've seen Stranger Things. Uh, <laughs> my bodyguards are good, but no reason to give uh, someone a uh, motive. Mm. I mean, I'm sure between you and your friends, tipping his hat that he's aware that you're not by yourself, I'm sure you could come up with something. Sure, it could. You do understand that if you're just messing with me, that none of you are going to walk out of here. You're not worth messing in the small town, but again, I don't carry a thousand gold <laughs> on me. We can meet and do a uh, trade somewhere else, but we <laughs> got ambushed already on the way to your lovely establishment, and that was without carrying change. Well, I'm going to have to insist. Either either you have it or you don't. And if you don't, that's not going to turn out well. And if you uh, start throwing threats around like that, no one gets paid and no one has a good time. Hmm. Well, guys, it's almost 930. <laughs> <laughs> I have 264 gold. So. I hate to leave it right here, but we're going to cliffhanger it right here. And in the next episode, we will we'll see what comes of Gideon's negotiations. Fair enough. Out of curiosity, how flammable is this ale mixture? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I Lord. mean, it, ale typically does not have a high alcohol content. Yes, but this is also ale drug mixture. <laughs> I mean, in a so, hookah bar. So what so, I hear is you're about to gas bomb this entire place. You're about to. <laughs> no, but it's always nice to have a backup plan if necessary. It's like I mean, here's the thing: if the if the dried <laughs> mushrooms were volatile, I don't think they would smoke them in a hookah. That just seems like a bad plan. What you what you might end up doing is basically <laughs> burning the weed field standing in. <laughs> Oh, that would be that would be entertaining, but also probably not good. Okay, so where's where's Craig? Did Craig, da, 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 Craig? I hope when I dropped, it didn't kill the Craig recording. That would suck. Okay, that's still going. All right, later, everyone. Have a good.